Welcome to America's Day at the Races. It is brought to you in part by America's Best Racing. For the love of the race, visit americasbestracing.net today. Saratoga in the books. It is opening day of the Belmont Fall Meet here in Elmont, New York. And the first race, we are loading up. Greg Wolf alongside New York Racing Association handicapper Andy Serling. What did you do all summer? You know, I took a little vacation. <laughs> I thought I was going to go away and just hang out. I ended up working some, but I had a good time. Okay, I did too. Uh, we're going to get right back to it here. Our first race coming up, we have a, a muddy sealed racetrack. Uh, races 2, 5, and 8 off the turf today. Races 4 and 7 stay on yielding turf, so you know. So that fourth in this early pick five will stay on the yielding turf. What would you think of this first race? Well, I mean, I agree that the five is the worst to beat here. It's sort of odd that Todd Pletcher did so well in the turf the first time, went right back to the dirt. The race came up, and this is a horse that's run well in the dirt before and also has handled moisture in the track. It's a horse to beat, but I'm telling you, the two, the five, the six, the eight, I think they're all players. And, you know, one thing is it's hard to complain about a little bit of weather, and I think the rain is kind of moving out given how rough the weather has been for so many other people as a result of this storm. So uh, no we're not question. complaining Yeah, Dorian here. has uh, wreaked havoc. The I heard one of the, in the under 10%, one of the 10% longest storms ever in the history of really? them being recorded. It's been wow. pretty crazy. It is weird. But yeah. It started like five days ago, and it's sort of, right? And yeah. Well, it's... But it has let up here. Yep. So we'll see if, if that's the last of it here. But yeah, the Pletcher you were talking about, that's the five Southern King, but we're taking a look at the two there. I love Jackson, Linda Rice, off the claim, and Jose Lizcano aboard. Sure feels like she made a good claim, right? I mean, there's a horse who's eligible for this non a one condition. Blew a field out, and that was the farthest that he had ever gone before, and that was two turns since his one. And I think you always have to be encouraged when Linda Rice is aggressive. But off the claim, why not take a shot against the New York Reds, right? Yeah, and supposed to love an off track, although that has not been the case so far for the two I love Jackson. Two tries on the off going. Uh, has yet to hit the board. Can a trainer switch, get a horse who doesn't handle wet going to like <laughs> a dry track? I, I don't know. We're about to find out. <laughs> I guess so. Seven to five favorite, the five Southern King, trainer Todd Pletcher. This one as well, two tries on the off going. Has not yet hit the board, but a deserving favorite here to kick off our card and kick off in early pick five here, the opening day of the Belmont Fall Meet. Let's set it upstairs. The voice of New York Racing with the call. Here's Larry Colmas. They are all in line. They're off. Red Zinger and Southern King come out running with Isle of Jackson and Irish Valor right behind, and then Master Key and BB Banker. Up the back stretch they go, and it is tightly packed on the lead here. Southern King and Isle of Jackson about to be joined by BB Banker. Red Zinger is right there on the far outside. Master Key is only two lengths off the lead and clear by another two ahead of Irish Valor, the trailer, as they run through this first quarter in 23.04 seconds. Up the back stretch. It is I Love Jackson on the inside, the leader by a neck. Southern King is second, then BB Banker squeezing through an opening on the inside. Farther out, Red Zinger, break of another length and a half back to Master Key. And Irish Valor is just five lengths off the lead, trailing the field as they head toward the half-mile pole in pursuit of I Love Jackson, who gets a bit of daylight now, ran a 46.56 half and leads it by three-quarters of a length. Now being taken on once again by Red Zinger on the outside as Southern King has backpedaled to third, now two and a half lengths from the front. Irish Valor has taken fourth, still with work to do, five lengths off the lead. BB Bankers dropped back, and Master Key is the trailer. Coming toward the top of the stretch, it's I Love Jackson in front. Three quarters in 111.86, and off the turn, it is I Love Jackson and Jose Lescano with a three-length lead, and it's expanding with a furlong to go. Jose Lescano just looking back for the competition. They're getting farther away. And that it's Southern King in second, Irish Valor third. It's all I Love Jackson. Kept to his task a bit late, but I Love Jackson's going to score easily here by about seven lengths in the end over Southern King. And then it was Irish Valor and BB Banker. So what did Linda Rice do to improve this horse on the off track? Apparently, the, our, our theory did work here. Yeah, I guess that's the answer. <laughs> a trainer can improve a horse. Yeah, well, I will say one thing. I think you'll agree. If a horse can get clear on the front end, it's a lot different story because I think a lot of the reasons horses don't run well at tracks, they don't like getting the mud kicked in their faces. And in this case, I love Jackson. And boy, what a claim. Claimed this horse for $16,000. A little quick math. And it sounds like $36,300 is the winner's share of that purse. Greg, they're out and out in a big way. 
Yeah, no question. And no one making up any ground here. This was easy pickings for I Love Jackson. And are we going to kick off this Belmont fall meet the way we, we ended the spring meet? Jose Lizcano. Yeah. With a win. Yeah. No, you know, listen, Jose had a good meet in Saratoga. I think, you know, we talked about this quite a bit up there. There are a lot of riders, people might look and go, oh, he, he finished fifth or sixth. You finished fifth or sixth up in Saratoga. You're riding your butt off up there. And yeah. we just saw, I think, this riding colony, which is strong all year round, the riding colony in Saratoga, but also at Belmont a lot, it's as strong as it can get. No question. And there's your meet's leading rider. Jose Lizcano, one race in, gets the job done. Does so at two to one on the board. Second choice, beating an eight to five favorite here. And uh, yeah, coming out of that turn, in good position. Yeah, and the money came in. This horse was seven to two, I think, when you and I were talking and got all the late money here, and it was right. And this is just a different horse, right? Had more speed than he's really shown. Now, he'd had speed sprinting in the past. He didn't use it as much in a mile and an eighth, but, I mean, he was cruising up front. Honestly, Greg, I mean, you hate to say it. It's obvious now. He looked like a winner of stepping away. He did, and he'd shown ability against better, against New York bred entry-level allowance. Back in against that level today, proves he fits at this condition. Linda Rice moves this one up off a big win. Little confidence boosting victory against Dominators at two lifetime. And gets the job done. Two, five, eight, one finish. And a little weather didn't scare away uh, a trip to the winner's circle here. Nope, the drawing away crew out in full force. And one of the things we love about a lot of these, the owners, the drawing away guys, the drawing away guys, they're here every racing day all year long. And we like to see our friends and fans and our, our, our you know owners that are here all the time have success. Track conditions, they went away fast. They're presented by Piranha Fly Spray, <laughs> the preferred fly spray of Saratoga Racecourse. Piranha on pests, gone. And I wish I could tell you what they were. Sloppy? I think it's sloppy and sealed. Okay, and yielding. And yielding and yielding and, we go. and green. And again, four and seven remaining on the turf. Races two, five, and eight, again, coming off the turf this afternoon. Yeah, we'll get a little rain to start things out. The good news is it's supposed to have passed through and uh, big race day tomorrow. Well, good conditions for tomorrow. Yeah, it's supposed to be Gorgeous. nice throughout the weekend. And Gorgeous. of course, we got uh, third and final leg of our turf triple series in both divisions coming up tomorrow. Are you upset that there's no possibility of a triple crown winner? No, no I'm excited. We, we've had chaos in the first two legs yeah. for the Trinity. And I'm hoping that uh, prevails, although digital age looks tough. I, I think the European outside of him looks particularly okay. tough. And, and, you know, I'm not surprised. I think you'll agree. Mile and three eighths for the Phillies, mile and a half for the Colts. We've gotten some of the more interesting European shippers for those races we have gotten yet. And not surprising. They have more experience around those distances than our horses. And you're talking about Spanish Mission? Yeah, his last race, very good. And we'll talk more about... That field coming up later on in the show. I love Jackson crosses the wire by a long ways out in front and getting the first win in three tries here on the sloppy going. We're going to take a break in the action. Speaking of the Turf Trinity Division, a threat of blue. Luis Saez led every step of the way. The Saratoga Derby, can he do it again in the third and final leg of the Turf Trinity Division? We'll discuss coming up. What I love about our Run Happy Yearling is he has this unbelievable mind and he's got terrific presence. He's a very athletic horse, moves very well, easily, naturally. Another reason we're very excited about this colt is that his sister, Indian Pride, actually just won at Saratoga, broken maiden by about 10 lengths. To have an active family like that with a colt with his presence is it's awfully exciting for us. Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. They're off. Bet the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Yeah. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn to the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. This proven son of Giants Causeway has sired four millionaires, including Claiborne Farm Stallion Lee. Recent top runners include Cutting Humor, winner of the Grade 3 Sunland Park Derby, plus three-time graded stakes winner Sharp Samurai, and international star Shamal Nybrass. This year, his two-year-olds have brought prices up to $310,000. First Samurai, standing at Claiborne Farm.
You're watching America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2. Our show brought to you in part by Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual. Unusually, well, it's opening day of the Belmont Fall Meet. One race in the books. And Greg Wolf, Andy Serling with you. Good to see everybody. Thanks for spending part of your Friday afternoon with us here. Uh, we are off the turf for the most part. Two races, again, do remain if you're just tuning in. Races four and seven. Stay on the grass. Your best bet, you're going to go to a race that was taken off. Yeah, I mean, we never root for races to come off the grass, but... I'm not going to cry that race number five came off the turf because I like the four sunshine gal. And I know you're probably going, really? He's going to bet on her again? Because I have bet on her and lost a number of times. I feel like she's been unlucky. And the other thing is, not only she's been unlucky and had some trips, she was shuffled back to last last time when stayed early. She's meeting a weaker field off the turf than she's ever met in any of those races. And I just think if Sunshine Gal's ever going to win speed today, and yeah, I agree. I'm going to better again. You are glutton for punishment. Bumped <laughs> at the start. Bumped at the start. Greg, I like to think of it as loyal. five ace. I like to think of it as loyal. You may see a glutton for punishment. I am. I'm a loyal, <laughs> but I'm a loyal glutton for punishment. You make it a price. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think at this point, everybody's sick of her, and I'm the only one left on the ship. All right. For Michelle Nevin, that'll be in race five. That's part of... The late pick four, and by the way, the late pick five starts in the fourth today. The Christie Cat, of course, is part of it. Our feature today for now, staying on the turf, six furlongs, inner turf, three-year-old fillies. And is anyone going to be able to keep pressure on St. Moon early on in this race? No, unless the European comedy, because she did have speed in Europe, but European speed versus this kind of sprint speed, I don't. The question is, is she good enough to beat a better field? And now, so given the ground, there's another wrinkle in that, right? She got loose last start. She won at Saratoga. The start before that, she had to duel head in head with a filly named Ella Nation, who she wound up putting away and, and hung in there for a second. And it looks like if she's loose today, she's going to be real tough. Yeah, I mean, listen, my problem is we got almost $8 last time against weaker horses. And now she's going to be a relatively similar price against tougher. So I can't bet her back, but I can't argue against her. Meanwhile, Brooke Marie. Christophe Clement, two back at Monmouth at five furlongs, and she dusted a field by three lengths. Yeah, and, you know, I, I think if you look at the last race, the Mahoney that she ran in, we don't know about the Euros here, but what we know, this might not be as tough a field as she raced in last time. I thought she ran well at Belmont a few starts back. She's logical, right? No, no question. And she was the morning line favorite. And the Peaceful gets another crack at scene, which she completely... Missed the break when she went against St. Moon in her debut. She still got second in that race. And there were some nice runners who, who came out of that effort. And then she comes back and she wins next start. Uh, listen, I don't want to take a horse off a maiden win against these more seasoned foes. But all the things you say make absolute sense. And as you point out, her first start, it's hard to say she ran significantly worse than St. Moon and she could be improving. So I can understand why they're taking a shot. I think that there's so many unknowns in here, some of the Europeans. What do you think? I'm no expert on, on turn of foot. It just looked to me like she didn't have the most electric style of going. She's a grinder. Yeah. Most turf horses, and you say are true, most turf horses, the ones we're excited by, they have that explosive burst. She's kind of a grinder, and the grinders, they don't always excite us as much. And maybe sometimes we overrate the horses with that burst, that turn of foot, as they say. And I agree, Peaceful doesn't have that, but doesn't mean she's not good enough to win here. Yeah, Javier Castellano was aboard for that maiden score. He'll be back aboard this afternoon. She gets the rail in the rematch with St. Moon. Coming up this weekend, of course, we're very excited about the third and final leg of this turf triple series. We have a loaded weekend ahead. Also, the Grand Prix American Jockey Club Invitational. Marconi, what a thorn in the side. <laughs> He's been to rocketry. Poor rocketry. But Jockey Club Derby, worth $1 million. Jockey Club Oaks, both coming up. And in the Jockey Club Derby, a threat of blue, of course, took him gate to wire last time out in the Saratoga Derby. We'll have the inside post with Luis Saez again. Yeah, and he's going to try to do it again. Don't you feel like Henley's Joy is going to show a little bit more speed against him in this race? I just can't believe he's going to be quite as far back as he was last time. And a threat of blue's got to get that distance, you know? Much more on the Turf Trinity Division coming up a little bit later on in the show. We're going to take a break in the action. Race two is coming up next off the turf in here as we approach the 15-minute mark to post, and John Velasquez will be aboard. Good credence, who's out there somewhere. 
<laughs> we'll be back Under a cloak with darkness. much more in the second when we return. Stay tuned. Program. It was a big, big day. By your side in the Sanford. That's the finest breeding program in Central Kentucky. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better than America's Best Racing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues, cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. America's Best Racing.net is a sport for you. Live it, love it, bet it. Whether you have derby dreams or midsummer derby dreams, this is Tom Durkin to tell you a registered New York bred can take you there. Diversify. That New York bred exact and the Whitney by Multimillionaires Diversify and Mind Your Biscuits shows the kind of quality that allowed New York breds to earn more than $93 million on the world stage last year. On track successes have spurred New York bred sales results. At the March OBS sale, Chestertown sold for $2 million. And this New York bred 2018 yearling brought a million at Saratoga. So get with the program at NY Breds. Com. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every screen, every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.tv today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. Use promo code TRYRTN for a five-day free trial. You're watching America's Day at the Races, brought to you in part by champion Sprinter Run Happy, of course, now standing for $25,000 at Claiborne Farm. And well, his offspring have been incredibly well received at the auction ring so far. We hope it keeps on going, but uh, so far, early returns, extremely positive for Run Happy, and we're gonna see the offspring hitting the racetrack next year, 2020. Second race coming up was originally scheduled for the turf, so we're now in the sloppy sealed main track here, six furlongs, New York bred, made special weight coming up here on opening day of this Belmont Fall Meets as we take a look at the field and keep in mind, off the turf, a couple of main track onlys that do get into this race, the three all over the map, who's 19 to one right now, the 12, easy for you to say, big price of 21 to one as well for trainer Patrick Quick. But uh, this race has changed quite a bit. I agree, and we like to talk about the potential value you're getting off the turf races. And Gre Greg and I were talking off air, the 13, never heard of her, will likely be favored by post time. But there's crazy value, as you mentioned, on the 12, easy for you to say. And what about the strange of the three all over the map? These two on doubles are huge prices, the tw three and 13, 12, and they could be great plays in here, at least for underneath. And I was thinking, never heard of her. What are you talking about? We were just talking about the horse. That's actually the name of the horse. The I've heard of her. On the outside. I've heard of her. <laughs> I've heard of never. You've never heard of her. Uh, someone you've definitely heard of, Maggie Wolfendale, joining us now for a paddock report here for the second. We'll take a look at some of these horses here in the paddock, guys, as we'll begin with number two, who is taking all the money. That is good credence uh, for trainer Anthony Margotta. And last time when she showed up in Saratoga, I liked her as a physical. I was a bit dubious of her on the turf. She ran well, though, that day. So I'm actually more interested, though, today with this being off the turf because she does present herself as one that should like a wet track. And furthermore, it was a lot warmer going back to August 2nd than what it is here September 6th at Belmont. It's much cooler. She's a bit washy that day. Today, not the case. She's really calm, cool, collected here in the paddock and looks fantastic. I mean, I really don't have any complaints with her as well. Like I said, I think a wet track is better than the turf as we'll move on to number three all over the map, who is one of three MTO entrants in here. Manny Franco will ride for trainer Ray Handel. Off of that trainer change will get Lasix for this second start. Did absolutely no running at Indiana Downs against Open Company, but she is a New York bred. 
She is a little bit on the smaller side. She looks as though she should be quicker, though, than that first race would suggest. And I wouldn't be surprised if she does have a bit more speed. Uh, she's not the 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 kind of horse when you look at her uh, face on that you necessarily choose or pick out. And she was wearing front bandages here, but I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, if this horse could be quicker than what that first race would suggest. And it doesn't hurt to have a bit of early speed when you're on this type of track. Moving on to number seven, Stoytown Baby. She'll go turf to dirt for Mark Cassie. And I just want to give her another shot here. She is by Bellamy Road, which I think is a better influence for getting on the main track. And two out of a Harlan's Holiday Mare. She's just really big and strong looking. For a two-year-old filly at this point in her career, she's a lot more mature looking than that age would suggest. And I'm always appreciative of that um, at this time of year. And she's very sharp once again. So she is one that will be forwardly placed as well. Now on to some first-time starters. Number six is Tails. I win it for Christophe Clement. They paid 50 50,000 for this daughter of 40 tails. She worked 10 flat. She kind of is small, and that's exactly what I'm observing here. And she kind of has that rapid stride. To me, she looks as though she's more meant for the turf, though the pedigree um, would say that she should be able to handle it here. But boy, she has a massive turf hoof to her, and she just looks okay overall. To be honest, she doesn't look great in her coat, and when these young fillies change in their coat this early on, it's not the greatest sign in the world. Another first-time starter is Masienko for Michelle Nevin, daughter of Hattrick. Um, there's not much turf in the first generation, though going back a generation there is, but I'm okay with her trying the main track here for the first time. She's a big, strong-looking filly, and she kind of looks a lot like Stoy Town, Town Baby, so I think this Michelle Nevin trainee does look very ready for a first start. I'm very intrigued by her uh, as she is 5-1 to one on the board, guys, so taking quite a bit of money as well. Maggie, thank you for that. Pick four begins here, close to 50,000 in that pool, approaching the eight-minute mark to post. As you get a look at the six in there, reds, I'm sorry. That's uh, Tails I Win It, Christophe Clement, first time starter. Let's talk about some of the main track only runners, though, in here. Uh, and the outside runner, who now is co favorite, never heard of her, who you had mentioned early, Gary Contessa. Second time out and actually ran on a sloppy racetrack at Saratoga in that debut. Yeah, and listen, she didn't run great, but she ran well enough that she's supposed to be favored in here. I don't think there's a lot to say that sort of isn't there. She's favored in doubles, co favored in the board. And I think you want to at least look at the horses that were entered for dirt as much if not more than the ones that are trying the turf, but also look at their races as well. And she showed some tactical ability as well, although she's going to be stuck all the way on the outside here this afternoon. Meanwhile, main track only easy for you to say, the 12. Face our colleague uh, Tom Amos's Risky Mischief, second time out. No, that was Jeremiah Inglehart. You're thinking of Risky, you're thinking, I'm thinking of the older horse. Mandate, I'm sorry. <laughs> risky yeah, Band Risky eight. Mischief came yeah. back and ran the spin away and right. didn't run particularly well, oh, but she ran impressively. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, listen, it was, a, it was a weird sealed track. We sealed because a storm was supposed to come in. Fortunately, it didn't come in. She ran his Fierce Lady first time out. I know it's low profile connections. I know the rider's a seven pound bug rider, but this horse is meant to run the dirt and it's going to be 25 to one in here. Why wouldn't you give this horse a look at least? Yeah, no question, but Gonna be, it doesn't look like uh, anything in the way of early speed. Right. And you, well, look, we don't know where you want to be on the track today, but it doesn't hurt to not get mud thrown in your face. On the other hand, if she's handling it and the others aren't, she's right. not going to be that far out of it. I'm very intrigued by Ray Handel's horse all over the map, the number three. And boy, did Ray have a great meet at Saratoga. So, horse, I know ran in Indiana first time out, but keep in mind, $38,000 purse. Know the New York red purses are over $60,000. Took a lot of money that day to be seven to two and was just eliminated at the start. Didn't do any running afterwards, but gets Lasix the second start. And they're shipping the horse all the way here. $95,000 weanling purchase from Liam's map. Ray handles good. Why not take a flyer in this horse and at least use in some exactas to me with the 13? Yeah, and gets Lasix this afternoon. Had a poor compromise beginning in the debut. Please. And we don't know, may have a little bit of pace ability. And somebody knows who's riding the horse. It's something nobody named Andy Serling does, but somebody out there, somebody knows who's riding. Yeah, Maybe still we'll not out. listed uh, on the changes, so we'll find out momentarily who is going to be all on all over the map. But yeah, not up yet. 
So, I mean, even shorter price now on Good Credence, who's well, the good effort came on turf. And the one, and also that's the other thing is this horse has run on the dirt, right, Greg? I mean, the debut for Good Credence on the dirt, the horse was twenty to one and got absolutely nothing. They clearly wanted turf because she was a much, much, much shorter price. She ran the turf and she improved dramatically. I mean, why would you take eight to five on her and ignore the 12 easy for you to say at 22 to one? Based on their dirt races, easy for you to say is as good if not better. All right, here's our post parade. Good credence kicks things off. And yeah, the dirt start in the debut didn't do a lot of running. I mean, I guess you hope that she has speed and that's helpful for her, but these are the kind of horses at short prices you're supposed to bet against in off the turf races. It will be Manny Franco, we just learned, on the three all over the map for Ray Handel. So you get one of the top riders as well to add to that. And you even got, look at Ray Handel. He brings his horses onto the track. He I don't does know if it I've all. Ever seen I'm that. surprised he's not riding the horse today. Oh, that, this it's go time for Ray's the three the with that kind of move, huh? Yeah, props to Ray Handel for that move. Big bounty, Leah Giamatti. Yeah, I mean, Leah's taking a shot here. It's just if she ran the horse long in the turf first time, what are the chances the horse is going to be effective sprinting on the dirt? Tails, I win it, a first-time starter for Christophe Clement. Not thrilled with what Maggie had to say about this one and did work a 10-flat workout, but once again entered for turf, even though it's kind of more of a dirt pedigree, at least even. Storytown Baby. Debut was on turf at Saratoga for Marcassi. And really did very little running, didn't even take that much money, but is a Bellamy Road, so maybe this horse will prefer to get on dirt. Over Thirsty, it'll be Talbert Howell, who was on this two-year-old filly by Stay Thirsty. And, uh, whoa, not on it currently. <laughs> but probably going to get back on. <laughs> 61 Hopefully. to 1, by the way, and gets a leg back up. Mosienko, the 9, 7 1 with Joel Rosario for Michelle Nevin. Hey, this horse is really kind of more of a dirt pedigree than turf pedigree, so perhaps for Michelle Nevin, this will be a, uh, an improvement surface. We jump to the 11, Bella Invasion. 52 to 1. Sam Jimenez. I was close to eased in her one start, which was on the dirt. Here's the main track only. Easy for you to say. 19 to 1, being forgotten a little bit. I, I don't understand how it got a 47 buyer and finished third behind Risky Mischief, who is 5 to 1 in the spin away, is almost mm -hmm. 20 to 1 in this off the turf race. And to who me, was, what, 3 to 5 for the debut? Everyone right, knew right, the Philly right. had talent. I, 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 this is ludicrous to me, this horse is this price. And never heard of her outside, 9-5, to five, Gary Contessa. Makes sense, but me compare never heard of her's last race to easy for you to say, and you're saying to yourself, why would I take 9-5 to five on this horse and not take 18-1 on the 12th? Not, I do agree that never heard of her is a very big-time player in here, but doesn't have to win. Three minutes away, second race here coming up, but 8-5 to five favoritism on the rail, and then on the outside, 9-5 to five second choice. And then there's this one, easy for you to say. So again, face risky mischief. Who? Yeah, I was just I thought was going to run much better uh, in that stakes race. Maggie, Maggie actually said in the paddock the coat didn't look all that great. I know she wasn't yeah. uh, all that thrilled with risky mischief uh, leading up to the race. I think that's something worth remembering going forward. Maggie had very po had real negatives in that horse, and she didn't run well. And that's something that Maggie does as well as anything or anybody. Um, you know, it seems to me in racing, Greg, one of the hardest things to do is to get a horse, a two-year-old, that breaks its maiden first time out, especially runs impressively, to get them to come back and run as well, if not better. So many of those horses just don't repeat those performances. They may be okay going forward, but not necessarily in their subsequent start. It's, it's just what? It's just asking a lot? I, I don't, yeah, I guess. I think it's just hard to, develop to do. So you quick. get them, you know, a lot of horses, sometimes, you know, a Shug McGay, he won with that first or impressive filly on Sunday, I think. Shug doesn't win with first time, so I think she won because she's naturally very talented. But I think a lot of the times they crank them up to win first time, and yeah. it takes a little bit of a toll. Well, and sometimes, too, you're facing horses with more experience. It that, took a little time, and that, and that could be a benefit also that too. sometimes. Eight to five favorite remains outside the six. Tails, I win it. First timer at eight to one for Christophe Clement, who, again, should have uh, one of the main contenders or a big say in our stakes race later today with Brooke Marie in the Christie Cat. He had a great meet in Saratoga, too, Christoph. I mean, he was, he was very quiet in 2018 in Saratoga, but he had a very, very strong meet. And I think, you know, so many people were in the shadow of that kind of meets that Chad Brown has, but I think you have to ignore that, not 
just ignore how good a meet he had, but look at everybody else and realize that Christophe Clement, Todd Pletcher had a very good meet. He closed yeah. out strongly with two-year-olds. A lot of guys, Jeremiah Englehart did well up there, obviously Steve Asmussen. John Kimmel had a nice John meet. Kimmel, good beat. You know, it's 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 a lot easier to go over or win one at Saratoga than it is to win even six or seven races, no which is quite question. an achievement. Let's check in with Maggie Wolfedale with more here on race two. Not going to favoritism at eight to five is number thirteen. Never heard of her, and she ran fine. I mean, as far as speed figures in a relative fashion here in this race are concerned, over a sloppy track, first time out, um, and this time again. She was more professional in the paddock. She's moving very, very nicely over this wet going here at Belmont Park for Gary Contessa. I don't want to take seven to five on her, but she's an MTO that has a race that makes her very playable here. Now, number three is all over the map. The other um, MTO in here for trainer Ray Handel and Guys, you've given Ray way too much credit. I mean, I've seen plenty of trainers leave their own horses out, just saying, but uh, I love Ray. All over the map, uh, as I was mentioning in the paddock, looks as though she should be quicker. And once they got the tack on her and Manny Franco on her back, she really came alive, came up underneath of herself, on her toes, bouncing around. I still wonder about fitness. I mean, the last time she ran was two months ago, over two months ago. So we'll see how fit she is over this wet going, but look for her to possibly show a bit more speed. Greg. Maggie, thank you very much here. So loading up for this second. And money has not swayed on good credence here. Daughter of Jimmy Creed has taken plenty throughout and remains the second choice on the board. I agree. I mean, the only horse that's taken any play that I can tell seems like the number three horse has come down a bit to the 11 to 1 odds. But basically, it's sort of like they're only betting two horses here, never heard of her, and good and credence and everybody else. And I fooled around. I, I'm alive in the double with the three all over the map. And I've used the three, thir 12, and 13 in exactas. And 13 on top of those. But but love to get some combination, get the three or 12 to run a bit here. You agree, 13, much the horse to beat in here? It's the horse to beat. I mean, Not you much know, the horse to beat. I mean, I don't, I, I'll put it this way. Do you think that the 13 should be 7 to 5 and the 12, 20 to 1? Absolutely not. I think no. it's just, it's to me, that's the essence of value getting these off the turf races. You've got an MTO, and this is one, if the 12 runs first or second, people are going to say, how'd they let an MTO go off at that price? And maybe the same thing for the three as well, who gets a trainer switch to, to, to Ray Hale. That's a good job. Now, this horse was in Brendan Walsh's barn, and Brendan's a very good trainer. But I still think there's interesting things about the 12 and 13, the, thir the three and 12, and I'm going to try to get them in there. I just think... Over time, you'll make money with those plays. Yeah, so never heard of her 7 to 5 favorite outside. Again, you know, we say it all the time. No two sloppy tracks are alike. And just because she showed some ability at Saratoga on a sloppy seal track. No guarantee that's going to happen here, but deserves to be a favorite. As we see Rajiv Mirage hop off a big bounty. He'll let the Naira starting gate crew do their thing and get this Philly by Posse in line. She went long on the turf. First time out and did not do a whole lot of running that day. So we'll see how she takes to this sloppy track. She moves in. Rajiv hops back aboard. He had a slow meet early on, but kind of got things going late as well. Yeah, he did. It, it's so hard in Saratoga. There's the 11 stepping in. Six to five favorite. Never heard of her for Gary Contessa with Javier Castellano. Let's send it upstairs to the voice of New York Racing for the call. Larry Colmas, the second here from Belmont Park. Stytown Baby and Easy For You To Say take their positions in the starting gate. That will leave the last one to go in. The favorite never heard of her. To complete the line, goes in, and they're all in line. They're off. Big bounty. Out for the early lead with good credence away running in second. These two kick on by two and a half. Never heard of her's third and moving after them now from the far outside. Then it's Stytown Baby followed on the inside by all over the map, who's three lengths off the lead early on. Then Bella Invasion. In between horses comes Mosienko. And then toward the inside, Tails I win it. Break of another two lengths more. Back to easy for you to say. And far back at the end is over Thirsty. 22.89 was that opening quarter mile as they make their way around the far turn. And it's good credence taken on by Never Heard of Her. The two of them are now 1-2. And Big Bounty is right behind them running in third position by another four lengths.
All over the map is fourth, trying to progress from that spot. Six lengths to make up, though. Then Tails Eye win it, and Mosienko on the outside. 46.81 was the half. They're into the stretch, and it is good credence. Good credence in John Velasquez with the rail in the lead, opening up to lead by three with a furlong to go. Never heard of her, can't go with her. And into third is Mosienko. It is good credence who is opening up late here. And good credence comes under the wire, winning it by six over never heard of her. And that it was Mosienko and easy for you to say. Good credence, John Velasquez for Anthony Margotta Jr. Daughter of Jimmy Creed takes to this sloppy track here this afternoon. It's funny seeing Tony Margotta, the trainer, and John Velasquez hooking up because as we've shown a number of times in the show, John Velasquez's first grade one win was on Turf Passer. And Tony Margotta, the trainer of Good Credence, was the trainer of Turf Passer. And the money came in late, made this horse the actual favorite at the end. And despite not running well in the dirt and the only start, she ran well today. By the way, speaking of graded stakes, John Velasquez closing in on a record. He's one away from Jerry Bailey's record. I think he'll catch him. Yeah. <laughs> Let Jerry's think of a comeback. <laughs> you never know. Uh, three to two, good credence. And days like this, racetracks like this, sometimes you're just going to see some big margins of victory because a lot of horses may not handle it. No, that's a good point. And we've seen two races, and I know they were both relatively short prices, but two races where the inside speed ran well, and it's something you want to look to going forward. Listen, I'm always going to bet against good credence in spots like this. Doesn't mean they're not going to win sometimes. In this case, I lost. But you know what? The 12 didn't run that badly for 22 to 1. Yeah, it was near the, the, the back of the pack early. Winds up getting fourth in here. So if you played some exotics, hopefully you created a little value there with the super. Yeah. But top two choices run one, two here in the second to kick off the pick four. It's good credence. Gets the victory here in the second. We'll set the stage for race three when we come back. John Velasquez with a winner, his first of the meet here in race number two of this Belmont fall meeting. We'll be back with more. Stick with us on America's Day at the Races. Practical Joke was all business. He won the whole thing. Practical Joke always showed a lot of ability. He showed a lot of heart, a lot of determination. Right from the first breeze, he identified himself as one of the best in his crop. Practical Joke down to the wire, the champagne. Practical Joke took both the hopeful and the champagne stakes. And he's a fast, tough, precocious two-year-old, trained on, showed even better form at three. It is practical joke in the Allen Jerkins. He's going to be a horse that no commercial breeder can leave off their list. They're off. Bet the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn of the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. This filly is very well balanced. She's correct. She has a really athletic walk to her checks off a lot of boxes that I think a lot of people as breeders and as buyers look for. She's as nice a yearling as we've raised here in 20 years. She's just the total package for me. Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Back on America's Day at the Races Hall of Famer, John Velasquez into the winner's circle on Good Credence, whose best performance in her two prior starts had come on turf, but she took to the off going here, at least better than anybody else did here in this second race. Wins at a short price, three to two, and returns $5 for the win. Thoroughbred Investment Fund, your winning owners, daughter of Jimmy Creed. Maiden breaking score here on this sloppy racetrack as we send it downstairs to Maggie Wolfendale. Please be joined by Hall of Famer Johnny V in the Irons, John Velasquez that is, aboard Good Credence as Johnny, you rode this Philly set, second start of her career on the turf, but today she just went to the lead and seemed as though she skipped over the racetrack. Uh, she, she did very well. Today, I mean, obviously coming from the grass to, uh, to, the, uh, to the dirt today, I want to keep the, her, her face clean and 
that's the way it worked out, and she kept running, so it was a nice surprise. As Andy pointed out, teaming up with Anthony Morgata as you won your first greatest stakes with one of his horses. That's right, you know, well, Turk, Fox, Turk Fossil, so, and then I ended up winning uh, my first great one when uh, Chulhofer had him with the same horse, uh, Turk Fossil, so, and to, uh, right here, Belmont Park, so. Uh, we go a long way, uh, Antio and I. Uh, actually, the first time I went out of town, it was for, for Antio Magara going to Calder, so he was the one who started me out going different places. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you hate to bring up me to bring up numbers, but uh, approaching Jerry Bailey's all-time record of greatest stakes wins, uh, sure you get there, but as a reflective moment, uh, how much does that mean to you? Over The longevity of your career is quite remarkable. I have to say, you know, I'm very thankful for the people that I ride with and, and that I work with and the, the opportunities they have given me, and uh, you know, I just concentrate and try to do the best job that I can do. The numbers come afterwards. One day when I retire, I can look back and say, well, I, <laughs> I definitely had a great career, and uh, Great, great accomplishments and with the people that I work with and you know I'm very very thankful for that so I just look that way I concentrate on winning races and try to work uh, what I can do best for the horses and hopefully they're that comments good for us and you do that very very well Johnny congratulations here with good credence thank you very much Oh boy, getting close. I know Johnny hates when I bring up numbers with him. I think the 5,000th win, uh, it took him a, a little bit of a while and he rolled his eyes every time we mentioned the number, Greg. 659 graded stakes wins. He's gonna get there, no doubt. He could come tomorrow, approaching Jerry Bailey's all-time record, 660. But what a crowd, how many do you think, I don't know the answer to this too, came for Todd Pletcher? Wow, that's a, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, you know, it's, uh, that's a great question. Off the top of my head, I'm gonna guess a third. Seems like oh, about really? the right number. I mean, it could be that high. You're thinking higher? I was thinking, thinking higher. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, John Les had an amazing career, Jerry Bailey. <laughs> to be in a situation where he can do something better than Jerry Bailey, and, and, and you know, Johnny was the first to say, well, I've been riding a long time and get the opportunities, but it shows you the kind of company that John Velasquez keeps. Jerry Bailey, obviously one of the greatest riders in the history of horse racing. Absolute class act right there with that victory and soon going to equal that record and, and go on to break that record. Uh, standing at 659 graded stakes wins in a Hall of Fame career for John Velasquez. The winningest all-time rider in the history of Saratoga as well. Yeah. Do you think that a lot of riders just didn't, they didn't grade stakes as much maybe back in the day and he's gotten more opportunities? Because there have been some riders. I mean, you think of Lafitte Pinkai and guys around a long time. I was surprised to hear that John Velasquez was looking, at, looking to break that record. But he's had incredible longevity. He really and he has. also has had, fortunately, he's been able to ride consistently without a lot of interruptions. Will number 660 come in this race? Turf Tierra, Jockey Club Oaks, John Velasquez will be aboard the Philly Desert Ride for Neil Howard, who comes in from Woodbine. She's three for four lifetime on the turf, but there's some intriguing Europeans who are making the trip. Yeah. It feels like the Europeans are particularly interested in these last legs because of the distance. Our horses, our three-year-olds haven't run these kind of distances in the turf really that much, whereas the Europeans have had plenty of opportunity and experience to do it. And this is Love You So Deep. She'll finish second to Dame Maliot, uh, who's pretty talented. She was seven to five in there. And it feels as though Love So Deep is really dramatically improving and reading about her on Racing Post. They were saying she could get something, so I'm paraphrasing, an award for being the most improved horse, where she came from to where she is. I mean, this is, that was a very big group too. Um, ah, and that was a serious race. Love So Deep ran great last time. Yeah, group two company as well. And yeah, started out at Nottingham in, in the beginning of her career. Meanwhile, Adisa is gonna have the rail in here. Flavian Pratt will be aboard and second in a group three last start at Deauville. Yeah, I actually put her on top in this race. Um, I want to say that the horse who won the race came back and ran well in the Nassau, which is a big, great group one at Goodwood. I thought this was an excellent effort by her, Adisa. And I, I'm always intrigued by those Aga Khan horses. Lady Prancelot, meanwhile, was the winner of the Honeymoon Out West and makes the trip here east for Richard Baltus. And, and she ran a respectable third in a very tough Delmar Oaks, the great group grade one last time. And I guess there's bigger questions with her and some of the others about distance because she's got to possibly get better at a mile and three eighths. Now, I still think one of the good things about her, she seems to be improving with every start. And that's a good sign, but will she be as effective at a mile and three eighths? Yeah, she would love to see a little bit of pace up front to help her closing kick. She comes from pretty far out of it. Yeah. Joe Talamo 
will be here over the weekend to ride. He will be, and Flavian Pratt is here as well. Yeah. It's cool to see him here. He'll be on Adisa, in fact. So that is the TR division in the Turf Trinity. First couple of legs, it is our ABR race of the week. We've seen absolute chaos. Henley's Joy in that opening leg. And then Threat of Blue led every step of the way in the Saratoga Derby. Both big prices, 13 to one on a Threat of Blue. What do you think happens here in the third and final leg? Well, one thing I think you'll see is a little perhaps more pressure in a Threat of Blue where I don't know what happened with Henley's Joy last time. And it's not as though Jose was kind of grabbed a hold of him, dragged him out of the race. But based on his race in the Belmont Derby, he's supposed to be more forward. Threat of blue, Kieran McLaughlin, he's already way ahead of it. He's just going to go up front and hope he can get the distance, right? Yeah, I mean, Digital Age tried to make a run, and Luis Saez was, he was able to just slow it down just a little bit, and that was the difference in this spot. So we'll see. Uh, Threat of blue, gate to wire. I mean, Luis had some great rides uh, on the front of Channel Cat as well yeah. during the course of the meet, but he was aggressive early there and got the job done. And how big of an advantage is that? with this horse's running style being drawn inside as well. Certainly can't hurt, right? It's going to be easy for him to just settle on the front end, and I don't think anybody's going to go on some sort of mission because he's a pretty quick horse. Um, whether or not he can get it done back-to-back, -back, I imagine Kieran has the same questions the rest of us do. Let's hear from Kieran McLaughlin on a threat of blue. We're going to take two-thirds of this triple crown. He's training fabulous. Um, he's came off of our big win up there, Saratoga Derby, and has had three works just like we wanted, and he's working great and doing well. We just hope that it stays firm. He's better on firm, but hopefully it's not too much rain. The mile and a half we're concerned with too, because we just don't know. We didn't know about a mile and three sixteenths last time either, so he did that properly, so hopefully he can get the mile and a half. He drew a good post down on the inside, the one hole, shortest way around there, and he'll leave there running and hope no one clears us or goes with us but if they clear us it'll be fine we can lay second but I just hope he goes slow early and finishes strong so a threat of blue looking to go back to back meanwhile Henley's joy I mean just everything went right it was a perfect ride perfect trip in this win in the Belmont Derby no it was and this was you know this is cool that Jose Lescano won the riders title by one at Belmont in the summer and on a 20 to one shot they all right you could say they all matter every yeah. win matters but that a key late win for him and getting that win was in here because you can't ride a horse better than he did and I think Jose's looking at it and he's thinking I got to be closer to it and I think Mike Maker's probably thinking that as well and I don't think they want to gun him after a threat of blue but you're going to see him more forwardly placed and Mike Maker also giving Kadar another chance in here I think uh, I know you were intrigued by this horse a little bit last time out. I wish he did a little running, but nobody closed last time. I tell you what, he needs to start breaking with the field. He's now gotten left two times, but I think he's still a little interesting in a mile and a half. Also, his last race was coming just, a, you know, what, 17 days. He's had over a month since that last race, five weeks. Manny Franco will be aboard Kadar in there. And uh, Digital Age, what do you make of him in here for Chad Brown? The horse, one of the horses to beat. No question, right? On talent, he's clearly one of the worst to beat. I have significant doubts about him getting a mile and a half effectively in here. And I saw he was the morning line favorite. I don't think he'll be favored in here if he runs. I think the Spanish Moon will be favored. I, I wouldn't bet Digital Age at a short price. From a personal standpoint, I'm always rooting for him. But I think he's a terrible play at a short price trying to get a mile and a half. Third and final leg in the first year of this turf triple. That is the Trinity Division and the horse you were talking about, a Spanish mission for David Sinkop. We'll have the outside post. We'll have Jamie Spencer aboard. And this horse has had plenty of experience going long. Well, you know, you see him sort of down on the inside in this race. Well, he's already gotten clear, but he had some traffic issues. The horse who wins Nyef Road, he had beaten in his prior start. That was in a group three going a mile and five eighths. This was a mile and a half. Constantinople finished second here, is, is a Coolmore runner. This was a solid field. This horse has been successful at a mile and a half, mile and five eighths. He's getting Lasix the first time. Now he has connections. Of course, Earl Mack, who's a on the Naira board it, it is a part owner of this horse with Team Valor. He was 12 to 1, this horse from the St. Ledger, which is sort of the third leg of their triple crown over there. And they've chosen to run here and they've been pointing to run this race. And, you know, I'd forgotten this horse was considered for the Kentucky Derby. He ran that prep race back in Kempton over the winter that provides oh. a starting spot for the Derby. So this has always been a high guard. I believe Spanish Mission will be favored here. And if he shows up, 
with either of his last two records, I think he's a virtual cinch. Never got to see Ja Bath in the Derby. No, and it's could have been a different outcome. I'm still a little bit bitter about it, Greg. <laughs> I'd rather we don't talk about it anymore. Turf triple double, by the way. Coming up over the weekend in a bonus there. We're in a $10 bonus on the final legs of the Turf Triple Series Saturday with Nauer Betts. Hit a $20 win bet on the Jockey Club Derby and Jockey Club Oaks on the Nauer Betts app, and you'll score a $10 bonus. Go to nauerbets.com for all the details. We're going to have a, a great Saturday afternoon here uh, talking about and previewing all those races. We'll have the early races on our show, and then those... Uh, final legs of that triple crown coming up later on in the afternoon third here on this friday afternoon seven furlongs new york breads twenty five thousand dollar claiming race and archam my baby five to two right now rudy rodriguez luis saez team up yeah archie my baby uh we'll see she she seems like she'll probably be second choice by post time to the one passport to victory or some questions they feel like the main two players i'm going to try to wire the field with a seven first forever Two for two on the off going yeah. first forever, who is currently seven to two on the board. Passport to victory on the rail. Here's my question to you, Greg, with Passport to Victory. You take a look at this win on June 15th. You win the non winners of one condition in the middle of June. You got Saratoga coming up. Horse was training up in Saratoga. Non winners of two for New York Breads. No, doesn't run for almost three months and comes back for $25,000. Those are a lot of intangible negatives, aren't they? Yeah, no question. You saw the traffic trouble there, but shifting out didn't do a whole lot of running when the horse did get clear and, and moved No, out. no, she won this race. Where Was I looking at the wrong race? We might have circled the wrong horse. <laughs> she <laughs> won her last. Back. I know she won her last start June 15th. <laughs> For Jeremiah Engelhardt. Uh, we'll be back. Third from Belmont coming up when we return here on America's Day at the Races. Stay with us. Flatter. This prolific son of AP Indy has sired six millionaires, including Eclipse champion West Coast. This year, he's adding even more stakes winners to his outstanding record, including Sovereign Award winner Avis Flatter. In the auction ring, his yearlings have topped the phasing tip in July sale two years in a row. Success on the track, success in the ring. Flat, standing at Cleveland Park. Oh, we're gonna go traveling. We have two run happy yearlings here at Mockmer Hall. We have a Colt out of Addison Run in book two and a Philly out of Sugar Reef in book four. The Colt is out of a young, graded stakes producing unbridled song mare. The Philly is a 10 mover, a great walker. They're good doers, they have great minds, they're easy they're on themselves, etc. Really, really well put together. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. They're off. Bet the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn with the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. Back on America's Day at the Races, our show brought to you in part by Run Happy. Never lost in his career while sprinting and did it all while racing medication free. Now standing at Claiborne Farm for $25,000. Run Happy, his offspring, coming to a racetrack near you in 2020. We'll get the third here coming up. We're approaching the six minute mark to post again if you're just tuning in. Sloppy, sealed racetrack, races. Five and eight coming off the turf. Races four and seven will remain on a yielding turf course here. And our favorite, as you get a look at the eight here, big long shot, 
is the six, Archam My Baby, Rudy Rodriguez. Yeah, Archam My Baby, it, 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 people see the Rudy claim. She ran to that Tiger Ladies Island last time. I ran for Danny Gargan, who was heavy. I mean, she made one to two or two to five in there and won by a pole, ran a triple digit buyer. Her second place finish is good enough to win here. She's been in some good barns, though. Linda Rice and Gary Gullo, Jeremiah Englehart. So it's not as though the switch to Rudy necessarily brings to her best race. And I don't know that she's necessarily not a little bit better on a dry track. I don't think the rain helped her chances. So here comes Passport to Victory to kick off our post break. Jeremiah Englehart, Manny Franco, three lengths score at Belmont back on June 15th. I think she's a better horse on a dry track. So I don't think this rain really helped her out. And where has she been and why is she dropping off one of the best wins of her career? Here's the two, Moondance Joy for Orlando Noda, second off the claim. Yeah, she she was moved up aggressively in a tough spot last time and ran okay. She likes a wet track. She still might not quite be good enough. Cotton Candy Cutie for Mertkan Kinter Masi. She's an overlay, in my opinion, if you think that Riot Worthy is worth three to one, the number four horse. She raced down the inside, which was not the place to be in her last start and actually ran better than it looks. Right, Worthy last two starts. They both came at Saratoga on off tracks and a win in the second. And she likes a wet track, so maybe that won't hurt her. But still, there's too many horses that I think are a little faster than she is here. Princess Micaiah Blinker's coming off. Michael Simons sends this five-year-old mare out. And, and how about um, Howell getting back-to-back -back rides? This one is an underlay at 50 to 1. Archam, my baby, still our 3 to 1 favorite here, Luis Saez. Uh, we talked about her before. She's a player in this race for Rui Rodriguez. Is she another one, though? The wet track may not do her any favors. And a horse that you like in here. First forever, undefeated on off going. In both those races, she has been forwardly placed. She's supposed to be in front. I think Jose Lescano has one job, take her to the front. If it doesn't work from there, there's nothing you can do about it. And the eight, Mazmania, big long shot outside, 19 to one, Eric Concel rides, coming yeah. off a win. She got the money last time, and she is the real last time was the time, going it's tougher here. 17 to one last start when she won against non-winners at three lifetime at Saratoga. That was on a dry track, however. As we look at a favorite, Archum. Arch you, my baby. Oh, am I, thank you, you could have just told me. <laughs> well, I didn't, you know. Uh, it's the first day of Belmont, I'm being nice. Um, you know, I don't know what to do with her. I picked her second. I think she's a player in this race. And I, I, I do feel, though, that she's not necessarily getting... People are looking at Rui Rodriguez and think it's an improvement. She's been in some very good barns. Yeah, Linda Rice, Gary Jeremiah Gullo, Engelhart, Paul. Charlie Baker. Right. We're going to take a break. Third from Belmont coming up when we return here on America's Day at the Races. Next on America's Day at the races, three-year-old Phillies sprinting on turf is the feature in the Christy Cat where Brooke Marie looks for her first win on the Belmont Green. She'll have to try and run down the speedy St. Moon. This filly has one way to go and could be tough to run down. Coming off a front-running score at Saratoga. It's our feature race coming up later on this afternoon here on the opening day of the Belmont Fall Meet. Our show brought to you in part by America's Best Racing. The go-to site covering the sport and lifestyle. Visit americasbestracing.net today. Welcome to those who have just joined us on MSG Plus. Fox Sports 2 with us as well. Saratoga in the books. We hope you enjoyed our coverage all summer long of Saratoga Live. And now we kick off Belmont Fall. Greg Wolf alongside New York Racing Association handicapper Andy Serling. And our feature race today, St. Moon, she is very quick and she might be all alone in the lead. Well, she does fit, look like the fastest horse early. The only other horse who potentially seems to have speed is the six comedy. And it's rare that a European sprinter would have the same kind of speed our sprinters have. Look at the field and the morning line for the Christie Cat, who of course was the grade one winner. Here in the States, also won the Diana at Saratoga. Pat Kelly, I think Fock Ridge Farm. I believe the same connections as Griscaverse. Does that sound right? I know Pat Kelly yeah, trained Pat her. Kelly she was wonderful. Brooke Marie. Yeah, here's one of the main contenders in our feature race coming up. This one for Christophe Clement. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Brooke Marie is probably the most logical horse in the race because we've got layoffs, we've got Euros that we're not familiar with. So 
You look at Brooke Green, she's just been consistently good in her dirt or turf races. Thought she ran well when she was second here at a big price, four races back, won this race at Monmouth, and last time out, on surface, it's possible that that, that Galway she ran last time, just a tougher field than she's in today, potentially. Here's what we have ahead for you for this afternoon, the entire card. We've got eight on the card here on the first day of this Belmont Fall Meet sloppy main track, yielding turf for the two races that do remain on. Again, races five and eight coming off the turf, races four and seven stay on, and it will be a yielding turf for those two. Yeah, well, we'll see. You know, we got that rain coming through. These courses, don't forget, we haven't run these courses you know, in two months, so they'll be in very good shape, despite the fact they took some rain. Third race, seven furlongs here. It's New York Bread's $25,000 claiming group coming up, and this is a look at our favorite. Thank you for correcting me earlier. Arch you, my baby, Luis Saez, Rudy Rodriguez, second off the claim, the one to beat on the board right now. Yeah, I guess. It's interesting that she's favored, and right now the money is slow to come on Passport to Victory, who, based on doubles, may be favored. But, you know, there's a horse that we haven't even talked about, Riot Worth. He's a very short price in the doubles as well. She's right there with those two horses. I think Archie, my baby, is one who can win. She was just in against a, a horse who was one to five or two to five last time who won off like a stakes horse. Yeah, so five to two favorite. Meanwhile, Riot Worthy, the three-time winner on and off track and two back in the mud at Saratoga was a close, good closing second. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought she comes out of another race last time where we had a runaway winner, and she really didn't run that badly. She was also two back when she lost to four to five. She was outside a day you wanted to be inside, and those wet tracks, she ran well. Now, she'd have to run a little faster, I think, in order to beat these, but I'm hoping that she's a controlling speed. So loading up here for this third ahead, sloppy sealed going this afternoon. And our first two races, we've seen horses forwardly placed keep on going. Yeah, I mean, neither one of them was a big price, but I think you have to note that we've had horses really be, do well and maybe exaggerated performances on the front end. On well, that one filly who our camera just left there used to be, wow, she was so good at Finger Lakes. And she's coming in off a win at Belmont, but that was back on June 15th. We've not seen her since. Manny Franco will be aboard from that inside post here. Does have a win on this track. Does have a couple of wins on off tracks. But five to two favorite from post six. Archie, my baby, as you look at Riot Worthy step in post four. Orlando Noda, he is off to an incredible start in his training career. Horses have really been running for him. Uh, we'll see if that continues, but boy, they have really been running for him. Though I don't think, if think if you're taking the short rise on this horse, you're supposed to be looking at Cotton Candy Cutie, who's a much bigger price and was down on the inside last time, wasn't the place to be. I don't really like her, but I don't think she should be three or four times the price of Riot Worthy, and she's four times the price right 19 now. 19 to one, yeah, she's next Five door times, in post six three. Times. Here's Larry Colmus with the call, third from Belmont Park. They're off. Moon Dance Joy had a good beginning. And now on the outside, it is first forever going out to take the lead with Aren't You My Baby? And then Passport to Victory on the inside. Cotton Candy Cutie is next, and Moon Dance Joy is taken back to sit in fifth, just to the inside of Riot Worthy up the back stretch. And then it's Masmania, and Princess Micaiah is trailing the field through this first quarter mile in 23 seconds flat. So they race for the far turn, where First Forever leads Aren't You My Baby by a length and a half. Cotton Candy Cutie tracks them from third, just two lengths off the lead now, with a half mile to go. Break of another four lengths to Riot Worthy, fourth on the far turn, and well off the rail. And they're followed by Maz Mania in fifth, who's now eight lengths behind. And then Moondance Joy and Princess Makaya is the trailer. 46.74 was the half mile. It is still first forever on the inside, fighting for the front. Aren't You My Baby is right alongside, and Cotton Candy Cutie is coming three wide after them. Riot Worthy is fourth and progressing in the center of the track, and they're into the stretch. And it is Aren't You My Baby between horses with a slight advantage here. Cotton Candy Cutie, first forever, gives way on the inside. Riot Worthy just keeps on coming from the far outside, and Moondance Joy is closing too. As they come to the final 16th, it's Aren't You My Baby, Cotton Candy Cutie. These two holding on, and it's Aren't You My Baby to win it. Cotton Candy Cutie, then Riot Worthy, and either Maz Mania or Moondance Joy. Well, Aren't You My Baby with the win, who, by the way, went off at 7-2 to two in post time. The, the one who was actually pulled up in this race went off your favorite. But you get a huge price there in second with that three you talked about at 19-1. to one. Well, we mentioned it beforehand, right? I mean, you've got a horse that using, calling about those dead rails, Saratoga, keep track, look at the track trends. But Aren't You My Baby 
She looked like she was sitting in the catbird seat the whole way around. You could see Louis Saez had a lot of horse stalking first forever. Lose was kind of everything right with first forever. She just wasn't good enough as it turned out. And they struggled down the lane and Cotton Candy Cutie looked like she might get there for a second, but if you used her to price in the exacta, could have made some money. Yeah, you know, it looked like Riot Worthy at this point was right, swallow both up. to yeah. yeah, just get all the money here after the six and three battling down the stretch. Aren't you my baby though finding more? Louis Saez on the board here at this Belmont fall meet with the win for Rudy Rodriguez. Let's go back to the beginning in here. The four, five, and six, all some issues out of the gate. Take a look what happens here. Now keep in mind the six is the one who won the race. I don't know which one that is. Five gets squeezed a little bit. Yeah, I mean the four was a little slow, right? I can't really tell from the head on maybe bouncing into them. She's a bit of a slow horse early. Probably nothing major. Seven to two on you know a horse who just a couple of minutes before post time was, how low was this horse favored? I think she was the five to two favorite, yeah. yeah. The late money came for Password to Victory and also for the number four Riot Worthy and it's a very square price on her, just a logical horse. Arch you, my baby, Rapoli Stable, Rudy Rodriguez, five-year-old mare by Arch, 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 wins for the second time in the off-going in her career, out-dueling this huge long shot. Six, three, four, finish. A little chilly here this afternoon, <laughs> but we're handling it okay wow. for the first day of this Belmont Fall Meet. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. We're going to hear from Hall of Famer Bill Mott and that controversial finish that first Saturday in May that landed him the one big race that was missing on his resume, a Kentucky Derby. Go from Railbird to Winner Circle. With My Racehorse, you have access to top horses and trainers, backside tours, exclusive ownership experiences, and fast payouts to your online account. With shares starting as little as $100, the winner circle is waiting for you. Go to MyRacehorse.com or download the My Racehorse app today to join the thousands who have already started their journey as a racehorse owner. Hey, we get time, time, 900, and about 900,000, thank you. He struck me as a classic distance type horse, the way he moved, his efficiency of his stride. It was a freakish victory, and it was one of the reasons that made Cupid a horse to really keep an eye on. To come off a long break like Cupid did, it's a, almost impossible, and just goes to show you the quality of horse he is. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better than AmericasBestRacing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues, cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. AmericasBestRacing.net is a sport for you. Live it, love it, bet it. Back on America's Day at the Races here on Fox Sports 2 and MSG Plus. Our show brought to you in part by legendary Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual unusually well. Thanks for spending part of your Friday afternoon here with us for the first day of the Belmont Fall Meet. And Arch You My Baby into the winner's circle. Luis Saez, Rudy Rodriguez, Rapoli Stable. This horse is... A win machine. Ten wins now from 31 starts. No, I mean, those are the kind of cool horses, right? Show up pretty much every time. And you watch this race. She really felt like she was in a very good spot from start to finish. Amazing, right? She's got 21 sec for in the money finishes and 31 career starts. Love what she does. Waiting for this uh, prices to come in. It is official. 6-3-4 finish. And that second place finisher again was... I want to say 19 to 1 on the board, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, do, I do the track trends for, for the tracks here, and you can go onto Naira.com and find them. And, you know, listen, I mean, if you have different opinions on the track than me, and certainly always happens to horse race, different debates, but talking about the rail being bad, a lot of the Saratoga meet, and this is a horse, Cotton Kenny Cutie, was second here, that was on a dead rail while Riotworthy was 5 to 2, was out in the best part of the racetrack, and perfect example right away, in 19 to 1, beating the 5 to 2, and maybe you make some money if you were smarter than me and hit the exacta. I was not smart. <laughs> we have prices. They just came in, so we're going to give them to you right now. Aren't you my baby? 
uh, with the win who floated up. I it may have been as low as five to two, just a minute or two before post time floats up to seven to two. Look at that exact, $142 for $2. What an idiot I am. Nine dollars even. It's early on in the meet. We got a long way to go. I got a lot more time to be even dumber. <laughs> <laughs> Six, three, four, finish. Uh, any day you come to the racetrack, something new can always happen. We saw that for the very first time in the history of the Kentucky Derby with uh, chaos happening after that 20 plus minute stewards inquiry and maximum security being taken down. In the end, a change was made, and one of the great trainers in the history of the sport earned a victory he thought may never come, and certainly in a way he never expected. It is Country House on the outside. Maximum security. Country House went two down to the line. Maximum security wins the Kentucky Derby. You know, they hung the inquiry up, and the more I watched it, the more I felt like there was probably a legitimate reason for a potential disqualification, and trying not to get too excited about it, you know, because you never know which way it's going to go. They looked and looked and looked, and I think at the end of the day, there was a, a reason, you know, and, and, and a basis for taking the number down. So for the first time in the history of the Kentucky Derby, the horse that crossed the line first has been disqualified. You know, we just happened to be in the right place at the right time. It was really a little bit surreal. You can go a good while without having a winner sometimes, and you take the win, you're excited for your crew, you're excited for the owners, and then tomorrow, we've got to start all over again. No question, it's been a Hall of Fame resume for Bill Mott from Mobridge, South Dakota. Won his first ever race. I want he was 16 years old with a claimer. <laughs> Gone on to do some pretty good things. Absolutely. You know, if Bill Mott had trained maximum security and he had been disqualified, they wouldn't have given him a win in the Derby. So why shouldn't he get a win in the Derby for finishing second and being placed first? I think Bill Mott earns his Ducky Derby win as much as anybody. No question. By the way, maximum security back working in the morning and uh, gearing up for a return to action in the Pennsylvania Derby. Where Mr. Money is gonna whip his butt. You think so? I'm a Mr. Money fan. Uh, Mr. Money, he's good. I I'm sorry they've just been running the lesser races. I'm glad they're running in a grade one now, because I think Mr. Money could Would be one of you still say, though, as we take a look at the odds for the fourth, the, the leader of the division at this point? I, I guess he has to. Security? I guess he has. He's got the two grade ones. He's got yeah. the Florida Derby, and he has the Haskell. So I guess he does over Code of Honor, but there's a lot, lot of racing left to be done. Don't forget, he has that win against 16 maiden claiming as well. He does have that, and I think <laughs> he that's something that nobody else in the field will have. I don't think anybody else that's running for three-year-old honors beat that maiden claiming field. Fourth race. This is one of the two on the day that does stay on the turf here this afternoon as we take a look here at the eight Imperial moment for Bill Mott and Judmont Farms, son of Triple Crown champ, American Pharaoh. This will kick off the late pick five sequence. Get involved. 19 minutes to post. We'll talk plenty more about this race and the late pick five when we come back on America's Day at the Races on the first day of this Belmont Fall Meet. Grade one winner and track record setter Lee. He traveled the world competing against the best of his generation. Now his progeny are hitting the track. His first winners include Saratoga standout Vast with juveniles selling for over $400,000 and yearlings bringing up to $650,000. The sky is the limit for this promising young stallion. Lee, standing at Cleveland Farm.
Hip 621, a filly from the first crop of champion sprinter Run Happy. Out of a stakes winning half sister to Chasing Bubbles, winner of the New York Stallions Erie Stakes, this New York bred filly will be offered by Woods Edge Farm at Keeneland September. Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Tom Durkin letting you know New York Reds start with an advantage. At the sales, buyers pay up to seven figures. And there's over $2 million in stakes money limited to New York sired horses in the New York Stallion Stakes Series, like the Park Avenue for three-year-old fillies. Duly minted wins it for fun. For fun and money, the winner's share generates an additional $55,000 from the New York Breeding Fund. Funny guys gonna do it. Funny guys win in the Times Square division generates the same money. So get with the program at nybreds.com. Want a shot at winning a million bucks? Who wouldn't? Here's your chance, the new Stay Lucky app from America's Best Racing. First, you've got to download it. It's available on Android and iPhone. Now that you've got it downloaded, just click on the app and set up your account. Once you're logged in, click on this quick tutorial on how to play. Now, you're just about ready to start picking some winners and building a streak, but before you do, a little help for you from some pros. Each week, the best races in the country are loaded onto Stay Lucky. All you gotta do is click Make a Pick, and you've got a fresh menu of races to sort through. You can pick one horse for as many races as you like. The more you play, the faster your streak will grow. As you start stringing together winners, you'll start racking up prizes. Get to that 20 win mark, you're gonna win a million dollars. And with the Stay Lucky app, you're always just a click away from everything that's on AmericasBestRacing.net. So, what are you waiting for? Download it, start picking winners, and stay lucky. With one eighth of a mile to go, American Pharaoh's got a two length lead. Frosted is all out at the 16th pole. And here it is, the 37 year wait is over. American Pharaoh is finally the one. American Pharaoh has won the Triple Grand. And he's also finally conquered the curse of Saratoga as well with uh, his two-year-olds. Pretty strong showing at Saratoga. I mean, what a moment that was. 37-year drought ended in the Triple Crown for American Farrell. And here's a look at his offspring who were winners at Saratoga this summer. Yeah, no, I mean, to win with four of them right away, that, that is impressive, I, I agree. And it feels like turf, uh, two turfs, and one and two on the dirt. And yeah, they've been running really well on turf. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's early on, but they've been handling everything so far as we take a look at uh, this field coming up here, 15 minutes away from the fourth here at Saratoga. It starts off the late pick five sequence. And in the darkness... <laughs> The eight Imperial moment, Belmont, Judmont Farms, American Pharaoh. Wait until the eighth race, speaking of darkness. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting to see Belmont with a two year old American Pharaoh at six furlongs for Judmont getting a start. And Belmont's not a trainer you think of too often winning with first time starters. Um, he wins with Phillies much more than he does with the Colts. But it's a start somewhere. It doesn't mean he couldn't have one that's precocious. There's a ton of pedigree in the second generation of the dam to be a turf horse. A really good group one Europeans. Another American Farrell, first time starter, the four in here for Linda Rice. American Farrell out of a war front mare sustained for Paul Pompa Jr. And the dam was actually raced for Paul Pompa, who bred this horse, and she was trained by Dale Romans. She was two for eight on the turf, and she had the board in seven or eight starts, ran a 90 buyer on the turf, and won $180,000, second fall from her. But there is plenty of pedigree for this one to handle the grass. What's your take as, as we take a look at the three here? She's quick for Wesley Ward, second time out here. The blinkers are gonna be coming off. Yielding turf now, is speed still as dangerous? Yeah, speed can be dangerous in yielding turf races, but I mean, she tired going five furlongs last time at a short price. She lost to another horse from Wesley Ward, and I just wonder how good she really is. I mean, she didn't run terribly in here, but it wasn't a particularly impressive performance. And this was going five furlongs. She was close to the pace throughout, and then she get beat by three lengths in here. Did finish clear, well clear of Now Is, who's going to be to her inside. Now Is, who's part owned by Steve Christ. Of course, he used to be the publisher of Daily Racing for him. So Steve is, uh, I don't know if Steve is here to see his horse, but I don't know. Now Is has shown not to be that good, but hasn't been terrible since then. I guess no, no, maybe could win this race. 
One of two in here for Wesley Ward, also sending out the first time of the six, Goose, with more on this field. Let's go to Maggie Wolfendell. And we'll check in with the horse you guys were just mentioning, who he is a gelding, but definitely not a she, guys, as no nay maybe comes back to the races here after debuting in early July uh, at, here at Belmont. And I liked him that day. I like him here once again. He's a good looking horse. He's very nicely put together. If anything, a change from his first start to his second start would be that he is that much more fit. Um, so I appreciate that. The six furlongs I'm fine with. We'll see how he does here over a track that does certainly have some moisture in it as we'll check in with some first time starters, all of which a little on the green side as we'll take a look at number eight Imperial Moment, the son of American Pharaoh. He was the one that kind of started everything um, as far as being green down here in the paddock. He's a little bit on the smaller side, so at least going the six furlongs looks to be an ideal distance for him first time out. He just isn't all that fit looking. And like I said, mentally, head is not in the game, at least back here in the paddock. Uh, he's been kind of rearing up and just just wanting to do something a bit on the naughty side. Uh, so we'll see how he does as we'll take a look at number nine, Nettleton. Actually, I give Nettleton credit. Um, this one, a gelding who was a colt when he sold for 320,000 at the phase of Ticton March sale. He's actually pretty chill here in the paddock. So that's a good sign. Obviously, he's a gelding too. That helps and he is a bigger more solid, heavier horse. So I kind of see why maybe a reason why they gelded him. Um, and he looks as though the turf should be fine. Although he watching that workout where he worked 10 and one over the main track at Gulfstream Park, he never switched leads, held his head a bit high, but maybe I was thinking that maybe because he would prefer the turf a little bit, the son of Cantharos uh, and definitely has those slacker patterns, fatter, flatter hoof to him. So I think this is the right surface and physically he looks ready. It's just Cantharos, yes, they're, they're more of the sprinting type. Physically, though, he actually looks like he might want to go a bit further, but I'm very, very intrigued by this horse here today. Now, moving on to number 10, Verrazano first for trainer Todd Pletcher. This one, he was a bit green as well. He was a bit studdish here in the paddock, too. He's built like a router, and watching his, at least his workout a while ago, he just kind of looked like one who wanted to go a bit longer. So I'm not sure if six furlongs on the turf first time out is going to be his gig. I like him as an individual. He's actually a very nicely put together horse. Nice big walk to him. Comes in here looking fit. Mentally and conditions, I have a big question mark, Greg. Approaching the nine minute mark to post here in this fourth coming up and it remains the Wesley Ward. No, nay, maybe. The three, who's our nine to five favorite in here off that debut, that was with blinkers on, now they come off here, was favored that day as well. Yeah, and, and then and lost to the other horse for Wesley Ward. All of the post parade coming up from this group in just a moment. Again, it kicks off the Naira Betts late pick five, our first of the meet here on the opening day of the fall meet. Todd Pletcher, you talked about what a strong close he had to the meet. He had some talented two-year-olds as well, and this is one of them here, Freewheeler, who was a son of City Zip, who won impressively on turf at Saratoga. Oh, now, I'm thinking, is this was at a mile and 16th. Was this the last week? I'm trying to keep them straight. Holly, thank you, Greg. Um, yeah, this horse was. This horse has a, has a big pedigree. I think this is, no, this is not the one I'm thinking of. This one at five and a half. It was a very impressive win that day. No word was the one I was thinking Yeah, this of. is no word right here. This was at a mile and a 16th, and sort of silent name out of an AP Indy mare, won by two plus lengths with a troubled trip. Well, I mean, no, I mean, I, you know, he saved ground. I mean, I just, I just think this is a very impressive big win for him. He's a full to Silencio, who uh, is a very talented runner out west, won $630,000. And, you know, he just sat in that pocket. But still, I thought it was a very impressive win. And the Bill Mott runner was favored in there, co-favored. Finished, I think, four. It didn't run well. And then this one delivered in closing Ooh, day. Yeah, seemed like everybody knew about this one. And the off track didn't uh, slow this one down at all for his debut. The Gov. Governor Morris, son of Constitution, wins by nine lengths at first asking. Right, I think some might look and say, well, he only got an 83 buyer. Uh, what was he supposed to do at five and a half furlongs in his debut? And he won as he pleased. I mean, John Velasco had to ask him a little bit briefly early in the race, but as soon as he did, got on the bridle, got outside of horses, that was a very good performance. And Todd's two-year-olds maybe weren't performing that well early, but maybe he waited a bit towards the end. And I thought all three of those looked pretty darn good the last week of the meet. Yeah, Governor Morris, on final day of the meet. 
was a single for a lot of people in that pick six in that first leg. Right. A lot of Still them didn't hit it, though. Still a tough one to come up with. Yeah. <laughs> right. Especially within that last race. Yeah. Uh, late pick five, Naira Bets. Late pick five, it begins here. You can play along by getting signed up and started with Naira Bets. $200 new member bonus when you use that promo code live at sign up. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime at NairaBets.com. And this sequence coming up here, again, two races rem remain on the turf. This is one of them. Races four and seven still on the turf. The fifth and the eighth come off as we take a look here at the other Wesley Ward runner. This is the first time starter, Goose, son of the Factor. Yeah, the Factor has been an effective turf sire. Now the dam side, Dixie Union Mare, she was 0 for 2 in the grass. She's produced two to try the turf. They weren't effective. They were better runners in the dirt. And I'm surprised that Wesley's necessarily going to grass right away with this one because even though the Factor's been an effective turf sire, there's much more dirt in the pedigree. Dylan Davis will be aboard the Goose here first time out for Calumet Farm and blinkers for the debut. So off track, as you kind of look at this field here, who do you think should move up the yeah, most? Yeah, it, it's very hard to guess. And it's, you know, it's also hard to know how much, the rain wasn't like a long sustained rain. Obviously it made the track, you know, muddy, it's sealed, it'll be fine tomorrow. I, I think also with it being the first day to meet and the big races tomorrow, they're gonna err on the side of caution, which is the right thing to do. It's not that big a deal one way or the other. And so I'm gonna guess being they haven't run the course in two months, I don't think you're gonna see the course condition come into that much play here. We'll see. Here's a question, final time. Will it be over or under 111? Oh, be under. I'll right? go under. Yeah, I think under. Yeah. I think it could be 110 and 1 or something, and that's not that bad, right? One, you know, depends. I don't think it's going to be that kind of boggy course, given how much rain. This one's on the wider, by the way, not the inner turf course. Six. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah. Six first timers, and then you have the two now is, the three no name maybe who each have starts under their belts. Now, now is the two, the most experienced of the group, as you get a look at now is 11 to one. Well, I don't know, is she that, is he that? I mean, he, you know, he finished second to Carrick, the horse who who, who beat um, No Name maybe and now is, and, and moved up, and right, lost by two and a half lengths after losing by six and three quarters in the debut and had some experience. I don't love her, ran the Skidmore, though a stake race last time, over at losing to another miracle, that American Pharaoh we talked about. I don't think this horse is the worst flyer to throw in there on experience. And we, we know, you know, Wesley Ward usually, especially when they're bet and they go off favorite, which the three did. Supposed to win. Yeah, they win first time out, right? So when they don't, and now you make an equipment change, how do you feel about Stretch that? Stretch out a furlong. Listen, obviously, Some negatives, he can right? win, but I'm not thrilled with him. I mean, the worst, it's interesting. And Maggie liked the paddock, and I picked on top on a guess. And apparently you, you suggested maybe a tip on the nine Nettleton. Isn't that the one that... I mean, that horse keeps getting bet, went to three to one, back to five to two. A lot of money for this one, their two-year-old sales work. Five to two, second choice on the board, the nine who has already gone through the tunnel, making the way to the track here for our post break coming up. As you look at the 10, Verrazano first, Todd Pletcher runner. Illinois, homebred from Illinois, an Illinois bred. Don't see a lot of them here in New York. Yeah, Verrazano first, that 10, ill bred coming up. And yeah, again, for those that uh, did not catch uh, Andy's comment there, this was scheduled for the inner turf, now widener turf here for this fourth race. Right, we're gonna run one in each course. They've left the stake race on the inner turf course and this one will move to the widener turf. So again, it's the start of the Naira Bets late pick five and we're going to see now is to kick things off here. Here is the two, so four starts on turf. A second and third in those four tries. Yeah, I, I don't think this horse is supposed to be double-digit odds, frankly. has run well enough in the turf to say on experience, I think he has a chance to at least get a piece. Here's our favorite. No, nay, maybe second time out, Wesley Ward. Can he get the distance? Can he stretch his five furlong speed? Maggie's not concerned about it. I am. In the turn to side, the four, eight to one. This horse has a terrific turf pedigree. It's not taking much money, but based on pedigree, I mean, maybe it'll eventually want longer, but it's supposed to be able to handle the surface. Happy Dan's a first-time starter. Ray Handel, Manny Franco. Dan actually won on the turf, ran 73 buyers, so there's a little bit of turf there. And street bosses, Dan's a street boss. He could do anything. Goose, we will see. 13 to 1. This is the first timer for Wesley Ward, son of the factor. Yeah, the other Wesley Ward, I not really much of a turf pedigree. And not taking much play, 13 to one. 
Imperial moment there in the background. American Pharaoh, first time starter for the Hall of Famer, Bill Mott and Judd Montfarms. The first full of Madame, who's from a family, the second generation, that is loaded with talented turf runners. And has a bullet gate drill uh, on the Belmont training track uh, back on August the 17th. Nettleton, strong works coming in for Jorge Abreu. Taking a lot of money for a trainer who's a very dangerous turf trainer. And Verrazano first getting an aggressive warm-up here under Luis Saez for Todd Pletcher. Yeah, I mean, the money not really showing a first fall. The dam was 0 for 3 on the grass, and second dam was a, a dirt horse, so we'll see. But Verrazano, obviously, a turf influence. All right, so another look here now is who gets another matchup with no name maybe. And, yeah, double-digit odds probably shouldn't be that number. And... What are the positives? Well, the positive is the race two back. I mean, look at the first start, right? Lost by six three quarters to Carrick and only lost by two and a half two back, so improved a little bit. It was in a tough spot in the Skidmore. I know the race didn't go that fast, but those were tough horses in there. And I'm not saying I love this horse, but he's run well enough to suggest if the others don't really show up, I don't think I'll have a problem with the distance, and I think he'd get at least a piece here at a price. That pot growing in this late pick five. Again, two minutes to get your wagers in. Closing in on $90,000 in the pool coming up. And favoritism holding with no name maybe, who is the blinkers coming off after being aboard for that, or on for that debut at Belmont here at Five Furlongs. As we look at the first time starter, Happy Danza here, the Ray Handel runner. Manny Franco aboard, 21 to one. And not a lot to go off here with this first timer. No, but the dam did win the turf. So there's a little bit of pedigree to suggest the dam side. And Dan's the sire, as, as we said, a street boss was the sire of Dan's and street boss has been very effective as a turf sire. So there's pedigree to say could handle it. And the Ray Handle had such a good meeting at Saratoga. I mean, obviously his horse started at a higher level. I think he won seven races up there, six or seven races. That's quite an achievement. No question, that's uh, as tough as it gets. Competition-wise, jockey colony, all of it. And we talk about it each and every summer. So good for Ray Handel. Let's we'll send out this first timer right here coming up. Two American Pharaohs. We'll see here in this fourth race with more. Let's go to Maggie. Talking about one of the American Pharaohs, that's number uh, eight in here, Imperial Moment. As I mentioned, he was very green in the uh, paddock. It carried over here to the racetrack. He was incredibly green with the pony. Uh, just thought about jumping on top of him, trying to get away from him. I really don't think first asking is going to be this horse's time as he is nine to two on the board. So obviously there's some talent there. It's just mentally he's going to have to put it all together. Now, number four is turned aside, as we often see, the other American Pharaoh, I should say. As we often see, though, with Linda Rice horses, he looks like he needs a start. He's a, got a little bit of a belly, just a little soft around the edges, as I like to say, um, for as far as fitness is concerned. He's been very well behaved, and he looks like a turf sprinter, so he's in the right spot, uh, but just fitness, it might get to him a bit. As number six, Goose, I wasn't going to talk about him because, as you guys said, he doesn't have a pedigree for the turf, and he doesn't look like a turf horse, but on the bottom side, he's a half to one of my favorite horses that my husband ever trained by the name of Two Dare, and actually my father-in-law still owns a piece of him as he's been running down in South Florida and running very well. They have that great starter condition down there for him. Um, but uh, I just thought he was worth mentioning because he's one, <laughs> he's a, after one of my favorite horses um, out of the dam at risk. Now I did talk to track superintendent Glenn Kozak and he did say that we got a quarter of an inch of rain and he thought they were going to cut into this surface pretty good out there. So um, I, what was your guys bet as far as the over under time, Greg? Well, you said under 111, right? Yes. I still maintain it will be under 111. Where's that Glenn Coase, that guy, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty well, that's a healthy amount of rain that came down. In a short period of time, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we've not seen any since. No. But there definitely is some give in the ground, no question, but on this yielding turf for the two turf races that do remain. But the wind is drying it out. <laughs> Good point. Anybody's wondering. Good point. It's a little windy up here. So eight to five, no name maybe. Start number two, blinkers coming off for Wesley Ward and the game plan I would think for John Velasquez, get out front. Go, 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 go. And take him gate to wire on that runner right there. We'll see. We'll see if the nine Nettleton is live, you'd think he would be forwardly placed in here. We'll see. He's down to two to one now. Nettleton, oh, there it is. Yeah, the late money keeps coming in. Start of this Naira Betts late pick five on this yielding turf course. And again, the other 
turf race that remained in that seventh, just real quick, how, who did you like in that seventh? In the seventh race, I, I picked the six comedy. Um, I'm going to take this horse off a long layoff for trainer Michael Dickinson coming up. Ran in two of the top group races for group one races for both fillies and for open males. Um, last year, as been seen since, didn't win a group three. I took that one over the three Brooke Marie and the four Say Moon. That's our feature, the Christie Cat. We saw No Name maybe acting up a little bit there. And John Velasquez hopped off, still not yet in the gate. They have the gate open to try and coax him in. I'm trying to remember if this horse acted up before his first start, but I can't remember. Mm. Maggie's good at that. Lost his footing at the start. Maybe if Maggie. So yeah. was unsettled for that first out effort. This is not a great sign. Neither is the fact that it's raining in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad side, too. Yeah, we have a pretty large overhang here. Somehow the rain's still finding It's not us. even raining out, but it's <laughs> somehow coming in here. Fourth race set to go, and the favorite from post, well, two, but the three horse. No name maybe for Wesley Ward with John Velasquez. Let's go to Larry Colmas for the call. Verrazano first is last to go into the starting gate here. A little bit hesitant to move into line. Goes in now. They're all in line. They're off. Goose was a bit slow to get going. Verrazano first on the outside, out for the lead. And turned aside is going out there too. No name may be away running in third behind them. A length and three quarters off the lead and taking back off the top two. Then Nettleton going up on the outside with Imperial Moment between horses. Break of another two lengths more. Back to now is who's racing on the inside of Happy Danza. And then a break of another three back to Goose, who trails the field as Verrazano first leads the way on top by two through a quarter of 22.33 seconds. And then it's turned aside on the inside, battling for that second position with Nettleton alongside. Break of another two and a half back to Imperial Moment, who follows in fourth on the far turn. After that, Happy Danza now is, no name maybe, has dropped back on the inside. As they make their way toward the top of the stretch here, it is Verrazano first off the turn in front, but Nettleton comes charging up on the outside and the two of them will arrive at the final furlong together. Behind them in third is turned aside to the outside, then Imperial Moment, and now is on the far outside is making up some late ground. Nettleton to catch, now is on the outside is closing in, then Verrazano first and turned aside. They're coming down to the wire and it's Nettleton. Nettleton beats now is, and that it was turned aside followed by Verrazano. Verrazano first, an imperial moment. You're right. Glenn was right. Nettleton, first time out. Jorge Abreu, Joel Rosario wins the debut here. 9-2-4 finish. And Glenn Kozak was right. 1-12. One 1-12. 12. One 12. Um, obviously kicking up. Nettleton gets the job done. Stalk got a little tired late. Obviously a, can we call it a demanding course there. Yeah. How about the run from the Phil Gleave Steve Christ horse? Uh, now it's almost got the money here. You can see that horse. That horse was way back. And it's funny because the 4, 9, and 10 were all forwardly placed. It's not like this was a race that was so much falling apart. Now is made that huge run. And the other thing is, Greg, you could tell from the start that no name maybe he didn't break, and he just went backwards. Yeah, he was not handling this turf course at all. But, yeah, there's that late run from now is the two. For a moment, it looked like... He had a chance to win this race. Yeah, absolutely. Nate to one shot, getting second. And, you know, opposite situation we talked about. And it's funny because the number four horse who ran a little had some pedigree in there. I thought for a minute Verrazano first was going to steal her in the front end. He looked to be going pretty strongly around the turn. Just didn't quite finish up here. But uh, Let's go back to the beginning in here. We'll show you what we're saying about no name, maybe. It's just, it's not, you know, he breaks about a half slow. John Velasquez kind of little, kind of, Drop back on him there, and he just never got in the race. I think Johnny knew from the start he wasn't running. Yeah, just got more uncomfortable from there, it yeah. seemed like. Nettleton had some sharp drills coming in. Eight to five favorite at post time. You always say? They knew. They knew. <laughs> and they knew here. So the favorite at eight to five, first time out, gets the win. Jorge Abreu, Parkland Thoroughbreds, and Joel Rosario. Kicks off the late pick five. Form full beginning. We'll have the prices when we come back. Set the stage for the fifth as well next.
he's got a lot of the physical traits that Run Happy stamping his foals with. He's a, a big horse. He's very well balanced and he looks precocious and fast. He's got lots of bone, very correct, and a big walk, and, and very smart head to him. He's very intelligent, Colt. Temperament as well. My horse is a beautiful temperament. He lies down in the stall every day, and just a cool horse to be around. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. They're off. Bet the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn to the length of the half, please. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. Mastery retired undefeated, winning his four starts by a combined 20 lengths. A six-figure September sale purchase, he won impressively in his two-year-old debut at Santa Anita. From there, he captured the Grade 3 Bob Hope Stakes and completed his juvenile campaign with a dominant performance in the Grade 1 Los Alamitos Futurity. At 3, the top-rated son of Candy Ride sizzled in the San Felipe. Now his much-anticipated first crop has arrived. Mastery, standing at Claiborne Farm. Welcome back. You're watching America's Day at the races as race number four in the books. It was one of our two turf races here on this Belmont Park card. A little soggy here in Elmont, New York, as Nettleton takes down the field, breaking his maiden at first, asking him, please be joined by winning trainer Jorge Abreu and Jorge uh, Nettleton. Paid 320000 for him at the Phasic Tipton uh, sale in March. Were you expecting this kind of effort? He took a ton of late money. I was, because the horse came to me in Saratoga, and the horse has been training pretty well, and all his business has been very, very impressive. And he's a big, good-looking horse, son of Cantheros. Um, what kind of led you or your team to, to purchase him? Well, I got Dave after he purchased the horse, Backstretch Farm. So when the horse came to me, he was already purchased. Was there any trepidation about this course? I mean, quarter inch of rain, and because he is a bigger type, were you a little worried about him handling it? I was a little concerned. I'd much rather than come off the turf, but you know, he did his job. <laughs> he got so, it done. so you do think he can handle the main track though, too? Oh, yeah, but I want to see him on the turf because I breezed him on the turf one time, and he breezed really, really impressive. So I want to give him first time on the turf. Well, a horse that can do both is very vital in a barn. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Nettleton, guys, as you heard it from his trainer, maybe we could see him in the dirt in the near future. Nice to have options, but Nettleton handling the yielding turf just fine here, first time out. Yeah, got the job done. I think the whole field was getting a little bit tired down the lane, and only now is the second place finisher sort of picking up ground, but gets the job done under those conditions and hopefully onwards and upwards. So underway in the Naira Vets Late Pick 5 coming up this weekend, of course, tremendous action, including the TR and Trinity division of the Turf Triple Series. Can a threat of blue take two thirds of the sequence? Meanwhile, we also have Marconi trying to do it again to rocketry. Yeah. Poor Rocketry just hasn't been as good in 2019 as he was in 18. And a different story because Marconi, I mean, as the field stands, is not likely to get the lead from Roaming Union. And I maintain coming out of this race, the horse who ran best was Realm, who chased three wide against the good rail and Belmont Stakes that Marconi was on. Rocketry did close outside, but I think that throughout the race overall, Realm was the one who was wider. And although Realm came back with a good performance to Suburban, I like Realm a lot in this race tomorrow, the, uh, Greg, and I know you named this, and I, I think it was really, I want to congratulate you, the Grand Prix American Jockey Club Invitational. That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. Um, you did not name it, Greg did not name it. Luckily, Larry Coleman is not gonna have to say it too many times. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we'll see, I mean, Marconi though, no question, he's the one to beat, right? I don't you don't like, think so? I don't like Marconi, I don't like him at all. I know he was second last time, I thought his performance was more because rocketry just didn't run well. I may turn out to be wrong. I don't think he's going to leave. Frankly, I think if Todd Pletcher wins, I think he's going to win with you're to blame on the rail. So, no, I don't like Marconi. 
Meanwhile, Highland Sky, turf specialist for Barkley Tag. Race came off the turf of the Johns Call. They decided to keep him in, and he would win by eight place lengths. Why not run him back, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I think they can say he's not going to win the Joe Hurst Turf Classic. They probably aren't going to ship him down to Kentucky Downs. They may not want to ship him up to Canada. Why not take a shot? Obviously, this is a much, much tougher field. But he certainly ran well in the slop this day. Why not give him a shot? He, he was a joke, right? Would love the weather we're having today. Unfortunately, yes, he's yes. running tomorrow. Uh, no, it'll be fun to see how he can try and follow that up uh, in tomorrow after that performance on a race that was taken off the turf. We're moving along here. We got the late pick four ahead. Fifth race was originally scheduled for the turf. Now on the main track, as you take a look at the odds, Mama Mary for trainer Joe Sharp. Favorite on the board here at 5-2. We have a main track only runner as well from the outside. It will be Sylvester Gonzalez in the irons on Bertranda, who is a four-time winner, coming off a second-place performance at Saratoga for state-bred 25 claiming gets into the race as well. Yeah, I, I am just baffled by the betting. I was looking at the doubles, and Sadie Ladies favor the double. I have no idea why. Um, I mean, I guess Bertranda makes sort of sense in here. The scary thing is that Paula Duke and I agree on my best bet of the day, Sunshine Gal. He likes her too. All right, we'll talk more about that. That is a scary thing. I don't know if you guys have ever agreed. Four to one on Sunshine Gal. We've picked a few winners together, Paula. David Dog was supposed to have a couple of runners in this race when it was scheduled for grass. He does have a couple coming up later in the nightcap. You know, sometimes in the sport, things they're just meant to be. Take the 1992 Pilgrim. David Donk felt he had a good chance to win it with Dr. Alfuz. Then another owner intervened, wanted to take a shot in stakes company with a maiden. Here's another edition of my favorite race. My favorite race is the Pilgrim of 1992. I'm going to run Dr. Alfus. It's with Eddie Mabel. Jim Ryan calls me up the morning of entries and said, listen, I, I wouldn't mind running a wad in that race. And I'm like, really? I said, well, let me see what I can do. You know, I remember having lunch with Mr. Drago. He said to me, I'd rather not be in an entry with another horse in a race. And I said, well, Alan, listen, he's still a maiden, you know, trying to get a check, just trying to get a piece of it. I, I don't think he beats your horse. And they're off. Dr. Alfus comes out running and gets directly to the lead. Dr. Alfus is just cruising on the lead here with Eddie. At this point, you know, I think I've got a great shot to win it with Dr. Alfus, but at the same time, a wad's running a big race. Moving toward the top of the stretch, it's still Dr. Alfus who turns for home. And his mate Awad is right there. They're one, two now as the field turns for home. I'm thinking, oh crap, if this horse beats this other horse, I might be in trouble. They're dueling with each other. You know, which one's going to win it? I mean, I'm thinking at this time, like, holy mackerel, I'm going to be 1-2. Dr. Alfu's determined at the rail. Awad resolute on the outside, and Awad prevails by a determined head. Now, I'm supposed to be elated. I'm walking downstairs thinking, I can't believe I just ran 1-2 in a stake, and I might have blown an owner over this. Because Awad was a maiden, nobody came for the race. Jim didn't show up or anyone. Uh, that was a turning point in Awad's career, and it went on to be uh, bigger and better things. It was a defining moment in my career, winning the Pilgrim. Uh, I think a defining moment for Faye and I, that we could have a stable that could be successful in New York. Hello, you have reached the house that Awad bought. We're not here right now, so if you leave your name and a number and a brief message, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. He did so much for us. He did so much for my career. Those horses don't come around very often. And think about that. He thought Dr. Alfuz was actually the one who had the better chance. And, of course, Awad would go on to become a multiple grade one winner. I bet Dr. Alfuz. Including, <laughs> did you I did, really? I love Dr. Alfuz, actually. <laughs> yeah. He won quite a few races on, on, he was on a turf. Good horse. Never yeah. uh, was in, in Awad, stakes was company. That Awad, Awad would go on to win the Arlington Million, among other races, in Manhattan. Secretariat as a three-year-old. He was a wonderful horse. He also brings to mind Kerry's Clown, who raced for P.G. Johnson. I tell you what, if you can't root for Dave Donk, you can't root for anybody. I'm going to step out. Me too. You are? I am. I'm done. 
Paula Duca, Maggie Wolfendale. They are coming up next as we bring you opening day coverage here from this fall meet at Belmont Park. And the late pick four coming up. It's 14 minutes to post. Formful beginning to the late pick five with the favorite getting the job done. Peaceful still to come later today in the Christy Cat getting another crack at St. Moon. Did not break well in the debut when they went head to head. Broke much better second time out and was able to break her maiden for Jonathan Thomas. Javier Castellano will be back aboard. And now the stakes debut still to come later today in our feature. It's America's original sport. And no one covers it better than America's best racing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle. The best races, horses, and destination venues. Cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. America's best racing.net is a sport for you. Live it, love it, bet it. She's just a, a very obvious, very strong, well-made filly, great bone, great substance, a very easy filly to like, a very easy filly to get along with, and I would say a, be a trainer's delight. What we really like about our unhappy yearling is um, just he looks very, very fast. Uh, he's beautifully balanced, he's a great mover. We've just been so happy with the way he's grown up and matured, and we really like him at the moment. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.tv today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. Use promo code TRYRTN for a five-day free trial. Practical Joke always showed a lot of ability. He showed a lot of heart, a lot of determination. Right from the first breeze, he identified himself as one of the best in his crop. Practical Joke down to the wire of the champagne. Practical Joke took both the hopeful and the champagne stakes. And he's a fast, tough, precocious two-year-old, trained on, showed even better form at three. It is Practical Joke in the Allen Jerkins. He's gonna be a horse that no commercial breeder can leave off their list. Twelve categories covering the best of the sport and lifestyle. All decided by the fans. It's the America's Best Racing Fan Choice Awards. Coming to this November, the ABR Fan Choice Awards, and you can see the voting time will start in uh, November 6th through the 20th. So you have a couple weeks, and I mean, it even goes to the best racetrack cocktail. Food, I already know the best racetrack food, so I'm, I'm not going to give that away. Um, the Vox Populi uh, 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 horse, which is uh, the secretary of the best horse of the year, the best race, the best trainer, best jockey as well. So um, just a little fun with ABR. They do such a good job. Uh, Steve Panis and Dave Torgman and the crew, Maggie Wolfendale and myself here. <sighs> In cool, uh, beautiful it's just Belmont. beautiful, isn't, isn't it, Isn't beautiful, Bianca, Elma? Oh, yeah, it's beautiful Belmont Park, <laughs> and I'm, like, sniffing my mic here. Yeah, this is what happens to you um, like, when we're live, and it's windy, and poor Maggie's hair is just all in her microphone right now, so I had to take the ball uh, there it is really for a little while. That. No worries, no worries. Just, uh, are you all right? Uh, yeah. Is it getting fixed? It's still a little bit. There, I think we got it. <laughs> no, yay! Okay, great. <laughs> Welcome back to America's Day at the Races, as Paul said. You're stuck with us for about a half an hour, Paul. You're going to be up here for the remainder yes. of the show. So we have eight races on this kind of twilight, if you will, card. We started at 3 p.m. We've gotten a lot of rain. So uh, all the races except for the 4th and 7th were yeah. off the turf. So this one off the turf. we got some late scratches to talk about. Um, obviously, the 1, 3, uh, 9, 11, and 12 were out as of when they made that call. So an interesting race as we'll kick things off though at taking a look at your late pick five ticket, which kicks off here. Yeah, it's actually pick the four, pick four sorry. ticket. Yeah, pick eight four. race card. So I'm 4, 10, 14 in here. The last race got scratched down, I wanna say to a field of five or six or somewhere in that area. Two, three, four 
in the next race. I'm taking my stand in the toughest race of the day. Sometimes when a, a race is full, th listen, the Christie Cat is a full field of nine. It's really tough. But if you look at the three in there, uh, Brooke Marie, her best race is at Belmont. As a two-year-old, she ran over a yielding racetrack, and she ran a darn good race. Her other race at Belmont sprinting was very good when she ran second. Um, I think she likes this racetrack, and I think she'll love the soft turf. I'm all in the last race. I, I do think the six and seven will be tough, but I've heard some good things with Ice Princess, the first-time starter, and I am Ann on the outside, another first-time starter from Michelle Nevin uh, by Big Brown, another Philly. So not a big ticket, only $27. All right, I like it. Well covered there. Only singling in the Christy Cat. That's that's a tough race, I gotta say. Yeah, I mean, my, my point was is like, do you take the yielding ground that we're we're gonna get? We really didn't see in the first turf race. We saw a favorite ran. It ran true to form. Uh, is it gonna run true to form with a little bit better horses? It, you know, I just think Brooke Marie might be sure. tough in there, so I tried to take a stand. All right. Brooke Marie, Marie, she might be the horse to beat as we'll kick things off here by talking about number eight, Mama Mary. Now, Paul, she does have, well, at least one sloppy racetrack to, uh, effort to go back on, and that was four back, back here last fall. You know, she was one of those fillies that we had so much rain in the latter half of 2018 where every time she was in, yeah. she was rained off. And Connections, sticking to their guns and keeping her in, it paid off the one time, but arguably she is a bit better uh, of a horse on the turf course but she's five to two right now you know i thought last time she kind of got a little tough with louie as she kind of rushed up on the outside and her head was kind of up in the air what did you think of that last effort well her last effort i thought yeah, exactly what you said she got rank on louie she broke okay and I, louie wanted i think not to go 21 and 3 and 44 like they did um but is she the quick of the quick is that why she's getting um bed here because there's some other quick horses in here like sadie lady now quick on yeah. turf we'll see what happens stone factor the two as well but maybe the public's thinking that she gets the front end because louie is uh very aggressive but i'm with you her numbers maybe as as a three-year-old they maybe can win this race but i don't know about being the favorite i thought stone factor was just so dangerous here as we do have if you want to play along with paul's ticket that belmont late pick four hit split promote promotion here on opening day uh hit the belmont late pick four and hit or split a huge a uh, million dollar point bonus so um starts here make sure you get into play and use your naira bets uh dot com and check out all the details as we'll kick things off though with number two stone factor when she breaks, she tends to always break mm -hmm. on top. Yeah, she really does. She's very fast. You're right. She's a bullet out of the gate, almost like a quarter horse when you look at her. All ones. Very rarely do you see that. Such a great gate horse. And as they usually say, or some say, better gray on a rainy day. And that could be the formula here at 9-2. to two. <laughs> Absolutely. She'll go out for Carlos Martin, Regime Mirage in the irons. As number four is Sunshine Gal. I know you like this one, Paul. Yeah, I like this horse a little bit with Andy, and we were talking about it. Everybody else in this race has some speed. This is the one filly that can make up some ground, so look for her late. She does have a good wet track race down at Laurel. Forgotten Hero returns off of a layoff as Dylan Davis teams up with John Toscano. You know, if you look at another they classify her as a gray. She does have a little gray in her. Her mm -hmm. two-year-old races are pretty good, Maggie, but she's just gone awry as a three-year-old. She can get back to her old form. We skipped over high Jingo there. We'll get back to her, but number seven is first appeal for Brad Cox and Javier Castellano. Yeah, that was a late I'm scratch. I'm sorry, Mama Mary, yeah, I'm actually, sorry. First appeal was a surprise <laughs> to me. That was a late scratch um, right before we got on set. The eight is Mama uh, Mary now. And this one we were talking about, it's like, do you want to take two to one? Sadie Lady, she looks to be another pace factor in here for a no Delacour. She'll get back to the main track. She hasn't seen it since last year, though. Yeah, you know, she ran some good races on dirt as a two-year-old as well. Maybe she's gotten better as a three-year-old. I thought you had to use. Now, Sylvester Gonzalez picks up the ride here on Bertranda. First off, the claim from Merkan Cantamasi. Yeah, and I think this is key. I don't think you need to take into account the jockey because Sylvester's ridden this horse plenty of times at Park. So he's very familiar um, with this mare by boys at Tuscanova. Is that something you use when, when kind of factoring in your handicapping at well, all? Well, I mean, I'm looking at Sylvester Gonzalez, obviously a name a lot of people don't know right. around this circuit. But then you look down the racing for him, and boom, he's, he's ridden her about four or five times. And maybe... Uh, Merkan's thinking, okay, let me go back to the jockey that's gotten the best out of her, and he seems like he has. And she's not that slow, and really, there are several horses who, who might be vying for that, that lead, and she has that great outside post. Yeah. No, she does, and she has, 
Um, you know, she's a wet track only. Is she is one for eight. She's four for 42 lifetime. But you're right. She's going a tiny bit up in class, but she's going from Saratoga where horses are dropping in class. Different ball game here. And she gets, you, you're right, a cozy outside post because there's a ton of speed. And maybe she can sit on the outside and then pounce. She's going to have to pass horses in here. One thing she's done one time at Parks way back when because I just don't think she's quicker than Mama uh, Mary, Sadie Lady, and some of the others in here. Isn't that funny how values of horses change when you leave Saratoga? I think mm -hmm. tomorrow we have a horse uh, first off the claim. I believe Danny Gargan ran him uh, last time for a 12-5 claimer, and he ran a 101 f speed figure, so he was in for 40 <laughs> off the claim for Rudy. So, uh, and he fits, obviously, for the 40. As we're taking a look at the gray here, that's number four. Sunshine Gal, as you were saying, the grays on a rainy day, and certainly getting just that. And the thing is, is her dirt form is much better than any of these other horses. Yeah, in here. she benefited the most by far by this race getting switched over. She was 20 to one on the morning line. She has no turf form. She did have a win um, under Danny Gargan at Saratoga way back when. But if you look at her, she's basically a dirt sprinter, uh, closing dirt sprinter, which might work well in this race because stone factor, speed, forgotten hero, speed, Mama Mary, speed, Sadie Lady, speed. So. The 14 is the one question mark if she can pass horses, but the four definitely can. We'll take a look at number 10, Sadie Lady, and she's coming out of that race where, wow, if this race remained on the turf, we were seeing, I think, the first eight, eight? finishers yeah, it's crazy, come right? back and face each other again. I thought she may have been the most disappointing of any of those horses coming out of that race. She, I thought she had a good trip and just really didn't have much response in the lane. She kind of idled down uh, on the you know, about four wide. Yeah. Joe Rosario teams up again. What do you think about her returning to the main track? I mean, they stuck to it uh, as a two-year-old. And, and I mean, she participated in stakes races after breaking her maiden first time. Yeah, out. yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. You know, she outfooted actually Mama Mary three back, but then Mama Mary passed her. Um, but she won first time out on the dirt. The second, third, I want to say like the sixth place finisher have come back to win. That was a while ago. It was a two-year-old, but you go back to that race and you're wondering, wow, maybe she does have some dirt form. That's why I included her. Um, I just thought maybe she could come from a tiny bit off the pace with Rosario. We'll see what happens. For me, she'll have to improve. It's number two, Stone yeah, Factor. Will. Paul, are you willing to take a bet that against that she won't be on the lead? Oh, my God, I don't I know. I think she will be. She's I think she is fast. the fastest of the fast of these. Even though there's horses that want to be on the lead, I think she's fast, even though this race is off the off the turf. It's going to be very interesting because you're right. If the two has got, I mean, bullet, bullet, bullet every time she breaks out of the gate. And Forgotten Hero has gone 21 and 3 on the turf, the 5. Uh, Sadie Lady's gone 21 and change. Yes, last time out, she can keep up, though. But Mama Mary's gone... 21 and three so this could be very very fast but again the racetrack could carry these fillies too or it could be i mean the four could be looking at louis reyes could be looking at shops with the four here paul are you surprised five to two still on number yes. eight mama mary yeah i am but i'm not surprised because we, we come back to belmont they know they know you can see the lot of sweat underneath the eight and it's a cool day out uh, underneath yeah. that saddle towel yeah you're absolutely right i mean it's it's freezing yeah. here <laughs> relatively speaking to what we've been used to and she has gotten quite warm out there hasn't she yeah. i don't trust her I, I you know i think she's always been a suspect prop proposition here uh, she hasn't made that many starts this year only her third start um, of 2019 and yeah she handled a track as a two year a wet track as a two-year-old but i think the argument could be made she's much better on the turf and I just I just don't think she's in a comfortable position out there today. No, I'm with you. I just don't think she's going to get what she wants. Now, she's passed horses before on the turf, like, but she was right off the lead, and she was basically dueling. So she's going to have to win the battle early with a lot of these speed horses and then the win the war late. I would think with the one, I mean, excuse me, with the 14 and the four bearing down, but I would think she's going to have to close. You're right. The two might be in front of all these. I think she is. She'll have to do it from the inside post, though, as we are about half loaded for this off the turf event. It is a New York bred A2X, I should say, six furlongs on the sloppy main track as we'll throw it up to Larry Colmus for the call. Sadie Lady moving into line will be followed by Bertrenda, who will take the outside stall. And they're all in line.
they're off. Bertrand has hustled out of there from the far outside and Stone Factor from the rail. It's these two out for the lead with Mama Mary away running in third. And then it's Forgotten Hero, Sunshine Gal in a bit tight on the inside and farther out is Sadie Lady. So they move for the far turn with Stone Factor the leader and Bertrand to right alongside. These two are together and Sadie Lady has moved up into third on their outside. Now a length and a half off the lead through a 22.7 opening quarter mile. Then Forgotten Hero, Sunshine Gal on the inside is just two lengths behind. And Mama Mary is at the back of the pack. Around the far turn, Stone Factor on the inside. Bertrand is right alongside in second. And Sadie Lady is coming up to them three wide. Three of them right together as they make their way toward the top of the stretch. Sunshine Gal is behind them. And then it's Mama Mary. Forgotten Hero is now the trailer after a 46.2 half. They're into the stretch. Sadie Lady comes up alongside of Bertranda. These two kick on. And on the far outside, it's Sunshine Gal up into third. Stone Factor is backed off to fourth. Down to the 16th pole, Bertranda to the inside, holding on to the lead from Sadie Lady and Sunshine Gal on the outside. Down to the wire, it will be Bertranda to win it. Sunshine Gal got second late, and then it was Sadie Lady, and fourth was Forgotten Hero. Awfully aggressive ride from Sylvester Gonzalez as he gets Bertranda in a position to stalk the main speed from the gate in number two, Stone Factor. But uh, congratulations to Merck Kane Cantermasi and your horse, Sunshine Gal, just not where you necessarily wanted to be. Made a great late run though, Paul. No, good job by Louis Race. Got the horse off the rail. I thought he, he did a good job to get the horse outside yep. instead of going for the split because there was no split. Because um, Sadie Lady at this time was still running. But like we said, we thought the 14 could finish better than all these other horses and the four. And we sit here and don't have an exact the box. But we'll take Bertranda <laughs> to start our, yeah. our uh, late pick four. Um, I thought she ran really well. And like we said, Sylvester Gonzalez knows how to ride a racehorse four. Mm, good pick by Annie. I know that was his best bet of the day. And I like the horse too as well. But just a little short there at the end. And Sylvester Gonzalez from Park teaming up with Merkan, who started his training career well, in Turkey, where he's from, but also at Parks. And Sadie Lady, she went off as your post-time favorite. But boy, Paul, she just has a lot of trouble sealing the deal. She yeah. just gets there and then just stops in that last eighth of a mile. She did it on the turf last time. She's done it on the main track today. Oh, you're right. I mean, she hasn't gotten back to, or as a two-year-old, you talk about it so much when you see a horse in the paddock, how they progress. Um, and she just hasn't progressed as a three-year-old. And now they're starting to think, okay, do we keep her on the turf? I would think their next move is try to stretch her out on the turf and check that box. Um, the good thing about this was, was we pointed you away from the eight. Mama Mary was oh. just not a good favorite. She ended up going off as her check and choice, but. Yeah, she three, stretched it up to four to one, actually. Yeah, she went up to four to one. Yeah, she just was not a good play. Nope, she wasn't, and she showed it out on the racetrack as we'll return here on America's Day at the races with official prices for Bertranda taking race number five. Stay tuned. the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Yeah. Earn valuable reward points on bets, play in our exclusive promotions, and earn cash rebates. Off the turn of the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. Each year, a new dream begins. To achieve that dream, you could never rest on past success. Audible, no doubt about it. He won it by two and a half. Yoshida storming home in the center. Yoshida, Yoshida has won the one word. Wake up, little one. It's time to dream big. Kentucky Derby winner, Orb. On the track, his runners have scored on both dirt and turf, including multiple stakes winner, Autumn Warrior, and Sipican Harbor winner of the grade one spinaway stakes at Saratoga. On the track, Orb continues to add winners. And in the sales ring, his two-year-olds have sold up to $250,000 in 2019. Classic winner, classic pedigree, Orb standing at Claiborne Farm. 
It's the Hat Man oh. here at Belafonte Park. Look at him, he's yeah. always smiling. I don't get it with the hats, Is but... that like a nesting doll hat? Like, you know, when you keep on <laughs> taking off hats? dolls, yeah. <laughs> I see him all the time. He's a classic fixture That's here at awesome. Belmont Park. But welcome back to America's Day at the races, brought to you in part, as always, by Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Well, it's official. Race number five goes to Petranda. She paid 920 Always makes me scratch my head when the lone MTO goes off as right. the third choice over Sunshine Gal and Sadie Lady. So second leg of the late pick five down in the books. Some a bit of value there, though. Nettleton would start things off as the favorite, breaking his maiden first time out. Three more to go, including our featured Christy Cat in race number seven. Coming up next, maiden special weight for the older Phillies and Mares. We're going to Mountain 16th over the sloppy racetrack. Field of six going postward. And we do see eight to five favoritism on number three, my happy place. This could be a hunch play, but I was watching Happy Gilmore today, and it says to find your happy Happy place and when happy found his happy place he says uh started to perform a lot better and shooter mcgavin was done so i like my happy face well maybe she will find happy her happy place, place. <laughs> uh, that was her damn's name my yeah. happy face yeah we'll find her happy place going a little bit longer as she'll stretch out from the seven furlongs but also facing her in their last start together is number two stand for the flag who is being sent out by jason service and owner co-owner michael dubb who is a fixture here around new york now he is a builder by trade but he's also a ph philanthropist philanthropist <laughs> by heart as he was very influential in making Anna House a retreat for all of the backstretch workers, young kids, and a proving ground for them to get ready for school. Here is Michael Dubb. It's close. A dandelion. No, it's a dandelion, and, and dandelions grow in the grass. It's considered a weed. Okay, guys, have a great day. It's a dandelion. People ask me, you know, what's been your, your greatest moment in horse racing, and uh, uh, what's your greatest win? And with, I don't hesitate, the Belmont Child Care Association uh, is the greatest thing I've been involved in. And it's not me, it's we. I mean, you know, this is a team effort. Jerry said, you know, the kids at the uh, track, the, of the people who work there, they're sleeping in cars, they're left unattended. There's nobody to care for them. It would be a great idea to build a daycare center. You know, Jerry, I'm a builder. I have always wanted to do something for kids. Uh, I'll do it. And I always thought I would build a daycare center and ride off into the sunset. But here I am, uh, addicted to horses and addicted to the daycare center. You know, picture going into school and you have a problem with, you know, understanding what the teacher says. So we eliminate that. And now you're going into school and you're actually ahead of what the teacher is teaching. Think of the confidence it instills. So we, we put the children in such a great position to excel, uh, and they do, and it's great. And the parents have complete peace of mind. Not only are the kids being cared for, but they're given such a strong foundation and um, such great love and affection. And you know, when they come out of here, they're really ready for preschool, and they get into preschool and they excel. You know, it's like having a strong foundation on your house and they don't necessarily go away at pre-K. They come back for after-school programs. They come back and do volunteer work. They come back and help out. Uh, so the, the pleasure of watching uh, these children, you know, grow up and be successful and be good people is just, you know, enormous because we know that it all begins with the foundation and that's what we do. It's the greatest gift, I mean, if you said to me, win the Kentucky Derby or this, I would choose this. So that's how I feel about it. Now, I'd like to do both, but that's a different story. 
Michael Dove closed out the Saratoga 2019 in second place as far as the owner standings were concerned. But he's always first as far as the welfare of the backstretch children. And I he was talking to him, Paul, and they're really trying to get things together to try to put funding and obviously dealing yeah. with the government to put a facility up at Saratoga for the kids and their families to come when they ship up there. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget that the back street, uh, the back stretch workers actually have families. Yeah. Um, people just think they walk these horses out and they just don't have families. And that's the thing that upsets me sometimes about horse racing are the people mm -hmm. that run the concession stands, the people that do all the things that make the day go. Yep. Um, behind the scenes people, the people that you're seeing walking right now in the paddock on that live shot. Um, and that's what Michael's doing. He's helping the kids and the families out. Like you said, um, a place to go. Um, a place to be by their family. Listen, I, I said this earlier before to somebody, when I played baseball, almost 200 days out of the year, I was with my baseball family. That's more than with your regular family. So you gotta be able to balance things out. These jockeys are away from their families so much. And I know it, it might not be at, at, um, all the time, but they're away for long periods of time where they gotta travel, get on a plane in an instant. So, um, having a backbone and having a, a significant other to get you through these kind of things is giant. Yes, it is. And I will say, Miss Grace Primrose Morley, a attendee at the Anna House as well. So she's uh, getting her feet wet as far as school right? is concerned <laughs> yeah, cool. um, at Anna House and couldn't be happier with it. It's a great, great uh, thing the Belmont Child Care Association does. As we were talking about, stand for the flag going out for Mike Dub um, will be facing my happy place again as they both stretch out in distance. We'll check out their last meeting, which was August 14th up at Saratoga. Now, neither of these fillies have that much early speed, at least in sprint races. Now, I have a little bit of a bone to pick with Mr. Andy Serling because in his track trends that he puts online, he writes them up every day, he said that the rail wasn't that bad that day. And then on Talking Horses, he said it was bad. So I don't know what to think. What to take out of it. Uh, what to take out of it. But um, uh, Stand for the Flag did rally well up the inside. Yeah, not a bad race. Uh, listen, maybe the Colin Kaepernick Hunch play is the one you want to go for at six to five to two to one. My worry is this is a horse that just left the Chad Brown barn immediately after uh, September 2nd of 2018 after a really good debut and then shows up for Jason Services, Philly by Super Saver. But like you've said many times before, Super Saver's best day was on this kind of racetrack. So this Philly might move up. Absolutely. And given her running style, you would have to think that she might like going longer. Yeah. Um, you know, the dam actually more of a turf horse, but then again, that she was by awesome again. So there's definitely distance mm -hmm. in that pedigree as well. So we are 17 minutes out. Uh, number three, my happy place still holding strong as your current nine to five favorite. But stay tuned. The feature, the Christy Cat coming up once again. Brooke Marie and St. Moon will face off both of which both of these Phillies searching for their first stakes win. You're watching America's Day at the races. Tom Durkin letting you know New York Reds start with an advantage. At the sales, buyers pay up to seven figures, and there's over $2 million in stakes money limited to New York sired horses in the New York Stallion Stakes Series, like the Park Avenue for three-year-old fillies. Duly minted wins it for fun. For fun and money, the winner's share generates an additional $55,000 from the New York Breeding Fund. Funny guys gonna do it. Funny guys win in the Times Square division generates the same money. So get with the program at nybreds.com. Coming on strong. Minute to stardom on top, coming down to the final 16th, opening up a two length lead. Wild about star, shining big here in the very one. Oh, why did I wrong? Testing one, two. The star guitar Philly lead champagne diva close to home. It's testing one, two. my love for you. Coming on strong. Hip 596, a colt by Eclipse champion, Run Happy. Out of the well-proven, quiet American mare, Queen of America, this colt is a half-brother to four graded stakes horses, including Well Moneyed, Economic Model, and Your Love. His second dam is half-sister to grade one stakes winner, Nanny Sweep. Consigned by Claiborne Farm, selling at Keeneland, September.
Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race from every track on every screen every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. Use promo code TRYRTN for a five-day free trial. I've already made a bet on this race, John. I've already bet over 157 is the final time for this race. And anybody in the set, by the way, if that fish Amos wants to get involved in this, anything's <laughs> under, his money's good with me. Uh, you didn't pay anything last year after losing quite a few bets, so we'll just make it a gentleman's <laughs> wow. bet because there is one wow. gentleman in the bet. <laughs> the under prevails. The under does indeed prevail, but the best part is that Andy at the 16th pole said, I'm a cinch. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. I've heard him say that before. And that looks like a tornado. And if yeah. that thing starts spinning, you guys are closing the show. Yeah, sets falling apart, storm moving in. So with that. <laughs> All right, guys, the rain's starting to come. Can I go now? The rain's falling. Holy Moses. Just briefly tell me about your trip. All right, let's get shelter, Louis. Congrats if you did win it, Lafitte. I just want to know if I could clear through management, if I could just wear your wardrobe. You got to have a doctor's note. We've been talking about it. You got to have a doctor's note. <laughs> no, I'm a little bit upset. I read the newspaper this morning. You said you wouldn't wear my shirt to bed. That's a little bit mean, don't you think? I'm a little bit mean. <laughs> What's happening, guys? <laughs> Closing week. Where did the time go? That's Gary Stevens. He's right there. Goes on for infinity. On Where'd everybody and on go? And on and on and on. Andy Serling is very big in the pubs in New York. We have him on every afternoon with the show. So we brought him up an official FDNY cap, but we almost couldn't afford it because we follow his selections. So. Andy, can you please bit, make better picks for these guys? I'll do my best. How, <laughs> I would never want to let them down. I'm no Maggie Wolfendale. I'm just making sure they all have four legs and a tail and a rider on them. What Stop. on God's green earth is that? <laughs> That's what my teachers used to say back at school. First win at Saratoga. How are we celebrating tonight? Popping bottles tonight. <laughs> I love her. Wow, she has to go potty. <laughs> I can't say I've seen that. They just changed track conditions. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I can't see you guys doing it. Oh. Oh. Are you all right? You okay? Yeah. We had some fun at Saratoga this summer. Greg Wolf back uh, on set with Paula Duca on America's Day at the Races here. A uh, very good time, and uh, now we shift here to Belmont yeah. Fall. But so those to those notes from Tom that you saw where he yeah. scribbled his picks, true story. Someone was going around the racetrack saying he had Bob Baffert's picks for the races. Are you serious? Claiming those were Bob Baffert's, and I guess he thought they were, but uh, wound up showing them to Tom Amos' daughter. She goes, Th those are my dad's picks. Really, are you kidding me? Got busted. That is Isn't absolutely that classic. <laughs> the best part about the end of that video is somebody in the background is telling you, you're not gonna get that blanket on Will's way. Could you hear that at the end? He's like, I don't think this is gonna work. And then boom, <laughs> yeah, I hope it wasn't the camera guy. Poor Art. Everything, poor Art, he got run over, but he was okay. Everything's okay. Yeah, yeah. we all made it out safe and sound. Yes. From Saratoga. Yes, we did. Even Art. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> six race here. How are you doing, by the way? I'm doing well. I mean, listen, it's Belmont. Uh, we got the bad weather today. But listen, tomorrow, the next day, is supposed to be absolutely gorgeous. So on to next week. So um, still got some good racing left. Uh, the the Christy Cat is a competitive field in, it is. in the next. Yeah. Yeah, we got a late pick three that starts here. Jose Lizcano already on the board here. And those are good silks to be in. Michael Dubb. And a lot of people forget. Last time we were here, who won the riding title? Jose Lascano, yeah. first ever on yeah. the New York Racing Association circuit. He'll be on board the two, who's our current favorite. You see him there in the background, just left our screen. But stand for the flag, what'd you think of the two horses? I there? was gonna ask you what you thought. Here's a horse that ran very well, first time out in September, right? For Chad Brown. Obviously, Michael spreads the wealth around. He'll use Chad, he'll use uh, Mr. Uh, and he'll use also Jason Service. Horses by Phil, a super saver. So she, will she move up in the slop? I thought this race was 
wide I'm with open. You. I'm with you. I'm Absolutely with you. wide open. I even thought the rail horse had a shot. I could see that. I, I, I my long shots to five. Funny flowers. Um, distorted humor out of Stormy Atlantic Mare. I did not use her enough. She wins because uh, I'm two, three, four here. My happy place, you know, Maggie talks about it a lot because uh, Shug works his horses in the slop. They usually run well in it. Um, and it's going to be the first time she's going to go long after three decent starts. She sort of runs like a, a horse that wants to go long sort of even, but she needs to get out of the gate too and get involved. Just tap it in. Tap it in. <laughs> Tappity tap. One of my favorite <laughs> movies of all time. Uh, my Happy Place, Suge Begehi, Daughter of Tap It, Joel Rosario, and now is your favorite in here. Uh, look, who's going to like stretching out? Because most of them are in here. And who's going to like this track edition? Apparently, Cairo Cutie, by the way, seems to have woken up a little bit, too, in the mornings. Yes, Cairo Cutie working great there in the Kyro mornings. Um, and... The clockers are saying that she's been working great at Saratoga. I think they tried to find a race for her. She's been off since May. She's a tough read because she's got a very good race at age two on a sloppy racetrack. But then the two other racetrack, sloppy racetracks are one was awful, one is very average. Um, the last one on May 30th. She could have had a better finish if she would have had a better trip. So the six is a tough read. You're probably, you're probably at home watching and you're saying, man, I'd love to play this pick three. You can get sign up started, play with Now Bets, get a $200 new member bonus when you use the promo code LIVE at sign up and play this late pick three. Play with us all meet long here at Belmont. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime with NairaBets.com or download that Naira Bets app. Here they come for a post parade. You can maybe hear that call to post in the distance here. Here's Blonick. So Blinker's coming off, and you know, the, the sloppy track effort from this runner was not all that bad. Yeah, it wasn't. And I know you're looking at that wet track Tomlinson number at 433, Greg mm -hmm. Wolf. This because it's a horse they paid 575000 for, so maybe he's gonna like, she's going to like the sloppy track. Stand for the flag. Jose Lizcano will be aboard now with Jason Service. Used to be with Chad Brown. Right, Colin Kaepernick, hunch play here, 2-1. to one. Yeah. Season got started last night. Ugly game for the Packers, wow. right? My happy place. Happy Gilmore fans around the world. Going to bet on this one. Joel Rosario, Shug McGahee. Yes, just find your happy place with everybody with white clothes and make sure Chubbs is on the piano. Go to your home. Trial and error. Five to two. Chad Brown, Javier Castellano. The, this is another wild card, wild card horse because before horses that were working at Monmouth that were shipping to Saratoga or Belmont for Chad Brown, N not that live unless they were turf. So this is another tough read here. Funny flowers. All three prior starts have come on turf. Yeah, and I think a horse that she might like the dirt. And the Barkley usually very conservative. So the fact that he left her on this muddy racetrack, I think she might run well today. And Cairo Cutie, it is Todd Pletcher. Luis Saez had a good effort on a sloppy track at Churchill. As you mentioned, Belmont, Oakland sloppy. Subsequent tries, not so good. Not so good, yeah. But off uh, second time in the Todd Pletcher barn. Hasn't been out since May. So she's got to conquer a couple things, but she definitely has the talent to win the race. Now, I mean, one of the, the best efforts from Cairo Cutie, still talking about the six, was at a mile and a 16th. That was at Oakland, yeah. though. Different ball game, obviously, here at Belmont Park. But if she can kind of refine what she did in that race, she has talent. No, she does. Look, her, two, her second start of her career, she ran second in a mile and 16th over a sloppy racetrack in an 11-horse field. I know it was an off-the-turf event. The winner has come back to win subsequent, like, three or four races. So if she can go back to that race, that puts her right in the mix here, definitely, for sure. So do you want someone like that, or do you want someone who potentially has a little bit more upside, maybe, or, you know, just to say they're lightly raced like this horse here? Yeah, the four is is an interesting horse because the two and the three in here, the one thing the two and the three um, don't have is they don't have experience going long. I know it's still a one-turn mile and 16th here, um, but they both have been sort of closing sprinters. Now, when you have trial and error, this horse has been forwardly placed going a mile and 16th, and Mom looks tremendous over the uh, sloppy racetrack like sh she's eating it up, and usually the Uncle Moe's do. So the four and the six had the advantage on the two and the three as in it, as if – They've run longer races and probably got a little bit more stamina than, than the two and the three. Those silks led the way at Saratoga. Oof, by a lot. Klarovich Stables, leading owners, and not far behind. Tremendous Saratoga as well. These silks that win so much on this New York Racing Association circuit. Michael Dubb, you think 
Dub turns the tables this meet? He's usually very tough here. Um, we'll see what happens. This is Michael Dub, and then the boys that had always dream in St. Elias Dales too, co-own this uh, Philly Buy Super Saver. And I think she has to move up a tiny bit here um, and has to be a little bit more forwardly placed. She broke better last time and got taken back and then made one run. I wonder what's going to happen today. And like I, I said earlier with Maggie, if Super Saver did have his best day on a muddy racetrack. Stand for the flag. Current eight to five favorite as we send it downstairs to Maggie. Yeah, she just popped to favoritism, didn't she? As we'll take a look at her stand for the flag. Is she second off of a layoff? And Graydon, I was not in the paddock uh, going back to October 14th for that fifth race, but was for September 2nd of last year. And I didn't love her that day. And she's definitely improved um, from physically from that first start now to her third. She's grown. Her coat looks 10 times better than what it did. She's filled out and she is bigger. So therefore, the stretch out and distance doesn't bother me that much with her. She was moving well over this sloppy sealed racetrack as well as it'll be her first start on a wet one. So I look, I have no problems with your current favorite as number three, my happy place. As Paul mentioned, you see these Shug McGahey horses often handling the wet track because he trains over them consistently and to they just have the pedigrees for it as my happy place, though a daughter of tap at these aren't this isn't one of those Phipps pedigree horses who uh, they tend to really do well over it. She's moving nicely, and she kind of has that very much of that deer kind of frame to her. Lightly framed, kind of spindly looking, uh, long legs. So I think she'll handle this track quite easily. And two, the more that she's progressed in her racing, the more convincing she looks getting uh, out to this distance. Now, number four, trial and error. I also thought what Paul brought up was very true as well. With the dirt horses coming from Monmouth, they just seem to be underperforming. But wow, is she a good looking type? She's sharp in here as well. We saw that big warm up that she got beneath Javier Castellano. She was by far the sharpest. Even though she's going to have two stretch outs to her inside, I think she goes to the lead. And we'll see if she can take them gate to wires. We've seen speed be pretty good, though horses can kind of come from mid-pack as well on this wet track. Now, number five, Funny Flowers, first time she's going to try a uh, the dirt, period. And we didn't see her like it much going a mile and 3 16th over a yielding course. And she is a heavier type of filly by distorted humor. So sometimes on those turf courses with moisture in it, they tend to sink. But a sloppy sealed track, and it is very sealed, um, so it's they're not going into it that much here at Belmont. She might be able to get over it quite well. She kind of has a versatile type of foot to her, versatile pedigree as well. I think she's intriguing as she sits at 14 to 1, the second longest shot on the board, Greg. All right, we're getting set two minutes away from this sixth here at Belmont. Late pick three coming up. Stand for the flag, eight to five favorite in the yellow silks with the pink rose in the middle for Michael Dubb, daughter of Super Saver. And here's a look at the five. So all three tries came on turf. We just don't know what we're going to get here with Funny Flowers, no. but <laughs> you would think going to like this off track. She might like it. Here's the thing that she's got going for her. She's drawn the reel in all three of her starts, the poor girl. Um, and then the first time she ran, she ran into uh, Varenka, who's pretty darn good. So she's running in some good ones. Maggie already touched on her pedigree. She does. She has a swing pedigree, distorted humor. They actually like uh, an off track out of a stormy Atlantic mare. They can, they can dirt or turf. The fact that Barkley leaves this horse on the dirt, I thought was dangerous. Like I said, I went two, three, four, but at 16 to one, I would take a flyer. And look at Barkley's numbers here. Turf to dirt. He's 36%. That's pretty good. Yes, it is. As you look at our selections of our analysts all over the place here in a race that seemed like it was wide open before we even knew about the track conditions today, and now even more so. Yeah. I mean, it, like we said, is it going to be the four and the sixes experience around two turns and at this distance, or the two and the three, the horses that have been running sort of closing sprinters, but look like they have more talent. What wins over? Yeah, I know it's still only one mile, but, but my thing is, is like, do you still want to, do you, do you t take a closing sprinter at seven furlongs and still consider it's okay around one mile, a mile and 16th one turn? Do you still think that's okay? It's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. It's a different ball game, right? Yeah. The two turns of the one, it's, some seem to excel, and it, it doesn't come into play quite as much, having to go. True. You just wonder if does it take the steam out of Stan 
yeah. uh, for the flag, or does she just keep on grinding? We'll see what happens. Because to me, the three looks like she wants it more. The problem with the three, she breaks flat-footed. All three of her starts, she's just not got left, but just hasn't broke great. She just sort of just breaks a little, like she's surprised when she breaks. Jose Lascano moving in line on stand for the flag, favored eight to five here for the sixth coming up. We send it upstairs to the voice of New York Racing for the call. Let's go to Larry Comas. Funny Flowers and Cairo QD will follow trial and error into the starting gate here. Here's Funny Flowers stepping up to line. Cairo QD, the last one. They're all in line. They're off. And it is Stan for the flag who comes out running with trial and error on the outside. These two out for the lead together. Cairo Cutie is away third behind them. Blonick is fourth on the inside and then Funny Flowers in my happy place. So it will be trial and error to make the front up the back stretch. Javier Castellano and trial and error get out there a length and a half to Cairo Cutie. Stan for the flag is third on the inside as they go past a 23.19 opening quarter mile. Then Blonick and Funny Flowers and my happy place is down on the inside. Five lengths off of front row running Trial and Error, who heads up the backstretch in the clear by a length and a half over Cairo QD. And now an early run here from My Happy Place, who's being sent through an opening on the inside and all the way up into second, going past Stan for the flag, racing toward the far turn. At the back are Blonick and Funny Flowers, a 46.85 half mile. So it's trial and error in front. Joel Rosario gets my happy place a bit closer now and sits on the rail three quarters of a length behind on the far turn. Then stand for the flag on the outside, followed by Blonick, who's now three and a half lengths off the lead. Cairo Cutie's lost ground. Funny Flowers is not keeping up either. It is trial and error in front by a length and a half. My Happy Place will ride the rail to the top of the stretch. Stand for the flag comes out there three wide. Three quarters, 111.75, and they're into the stretch. And here on the outside comes Stand for the flag, making a rush to the front as they come to the final furlong. Stand for the flag has taken the lead here, pulling away from trial and error. And they have left my happy place behind to third. Past the 16th pole, and it's Jose Lescano and stand for the flag. And they're coming home strong to win it by three over trial and error. And there was my happy place, and fourth is going to be a photo that looked like it went to Cairo Cutie. Number two today for Jose Lizcano, stand for the flag, post time favored at eight to five with the win here in the sixth. Yeah, crazy race, right? Because when you looked at it coming to the top of the lane, it looked like Javier Castellano was absolutely loaded here with the four trial and error, who never looked like a loser till about right here. And I don't know if Javier asked and there was just nothing in the tank, but wow, the four looked like she was just going to jog it, but stand for the flag, liked the little bit of extra distance, and when Jose Lascano went right-handed, it was over with. And your favorite, yes, at post time, will get the job done here, and Jose's second win of the day. Stand for the flag, third time out, maiden breaking score. And photo for show. No, I think it was photo for fourth. I want to say the six was battling. I think the six ended up getting the bob um, with the one. The five just didn't take to the off track, and Junior stopped on the five. She wasn't having any of it. Two, four, three. Mm. Yeah, I think the six. Right? Yeah. For fourth there. So it basically ran A, B, C, D. Well, A, C, B, because the three was two to one, your second choice. Uh, case of who likes this off going best, and it would stand for the flag here. Jason Service, Michael Dubb, St. Elias Stables, and Jose Lizcano. Coming off his first ever New York Racing Association riding title back here in the spring summer meet. Gets number two here this afternoon. Well, the price is from this sixth when we come back. Stand for the flag, eight to five favorite. Takes race six, our feature race. Coming up next, that is the Christy Cat, six furlongs in the inner turf for three-year-old fillies. We'll be back. Hip number 43, a Colt by champion sprinter, Run Happy. 
out of a half-sister to multiple graded stakes winner and grade one placed Kittens Point. From the immediate family of top performers Five Star Day, High Finance, and Marketry. Consigned by Claiborne Farm. Selling at Keeneland, September. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. This son of Danzig ranks among the world's elite sires. With grade one winners on dirt and turf and star performers both at home and abroad, Warfront's success as an international super sire is unmatched. Recent grade one winners include Omaha Beach and Preakness Stakes hero War of Will. In the sales ring, his $2.4 million sale topper at Keeneland September was the highest price yearling sold in North America last year. Warfront, standing at Claiborne Farm. Mary Poppins. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to <laughs> Welcome back to America's Day at the races. Poor my poor assistant Leah. She nearly got blown away like Mary Poppins as she tried to hold the umbrella over winning owner Mike Dove and I. Leah, thank you for your efforts. Mike and I will be okay. It's just drizzling anyways. But Mike, stand for the flag. Uh, stretched out very successfully second off the bench today. Yeah, we always thought that this filly wanted long. Um, she's out of that really nice Phipps family. Um, storm flag flying and yeah. her mother's raised the flag. So we've always had high hopes, always thought the stretch out was the way to go. But if you follow Jason, you know, he generally doesn't start horses long. So this was short to long. Worked out beautifully, I'd say. And the name, a bit of a meaningful story behind it. Yeah, uh, one of the people I'm with, uh, unfortunately, he lost his son, in a 24-year-old son, in a, a car wreck uh, this summer on Long Island. And um, just before he, day or two before he passed away, he was wearing a, a shirt that said, stand for the flag. So he feels like he got a message from heaven. That's very, very sweet and touching. Uh, Mike, you're always kind of bringing people into the sport. I know you often have people out here at Belmont. Is that something you love to do? Yeah, I really do. Um, the, the particular um, woman, Deborah Benjamin, that I'm partners with here, we've been business partners for 20 years. And she's always been a fan of the game, always wanted to get involved. And, uh, you know, it's just great to come out here with uh, Debbie and win a race. So it's really exciting. She was giving Stan for the flag a lot to love here in the winter circle. Absolutely, hopefully <laughs> a lot more to come. Absolutely as well, Mike, congratulations. Thank you. And we can get a shot of Debbie here. She was uh, super affectionate to Stan for the flag. Yes. <laughs> wow, that had to be an incredibly emotional victory yeah. here. With this yeah. Philly getting the win. Yeah, that's awesome story. Uh, good stuff there. Um, congratulations to the connections. The super saver Philly out of the awesome again rare. Raise the flag like Michael was talking about. Tremendous female family. So this Philly might have uh, a tremendous future. Great job by Jason Service. Jason Service, of course. Maximum security back to work yeah. this morning. Eyeing that Pennsylvania Derby. Obviously going to be very, very tough. Um, and I would think it's going to be odds on in there. So... I think Jason is just leading up to the, to the Breeders' Cup. I really feel that way. Maybe he'll take a stand there, but we'll see what happens. It's sort of chalky late pick five follow along. But, you know, Bertranda didn't really get bet. And Nettleton, I thought you had to go a little bit deep in there. But this is, could be the separator of this race. Our feature, the Christy Cat. Six furlongs coming up on turf. And St. Moon, she will be the one to catch in this race. She is very quick. Although comedy, look, it's European speed, but she has been a speedster in her races overseas. Can she keep company with St. Moon early on? Yeah, she'll get Lasix for her North American debut. She has not been out since September 29th of 2018. She should be fresh. Lascano will look for a triple today. And you make a great point. Michael Dickinson is the trainer. There is St. Moon the four, the gray, the speedster, and Jorge Navarro usually 
get speed out of all of his horses. The reason why she's the favorite, when you look at this field, there's really nobody that can really go with her unless the two maybe does. I don't know. That's why I like the three a tiny bit. I thought the three Brooke Marie could lay right behind her. Five to two. We're looking to go gate to wire once again as she did last start at Saratoga in an entry level allowance. We have a late scratch of the two here. Jen Emily coming out of this race who she'd only tried turf once. It was going a mile at Saratoga for 75 claiming. Yeah, and you know, she was a horse that could bring some speed to the party. So now it looks like St. Moon is gonna have the lead to herself. Unless like you're saying, um, the European Philly, the Irish bred comedy can maybe bust out of there. Going up tomorrow, final leg of that tur triple series for both the boys and girls and for the ladies, it is the Jockey Club Oaks Invitational where some imports are gonna get a lot of attention in this race, including, is it Adisa? Adisa down on the inside here? I guess that's how you say it. It's got a very unbelievable pedigree. This is a Kentucky bred by Ken Joy of a Rock of Gibraltar mare. So sort of a mixed pedigree. And this was her last time out at Deauville in France um, in a gray three and with Christophe Simon aboard. And she was the favorite that they had two to one. Looks like she's home right here. And I'm wondering if she, tiny bit hung in the middle of the racetrack or she really didn't see that other horse but she looked like she was by but then that other horse kept her by bay by about a length and a quarter but she had back-to-back -back wins before she went in the graded company and she's ran well in both of those races so a filly coming in uh gonna be very very tough and she gets flavian pratt aboard who will fly in for the mount multiple group place filly in the distance should not be an issue for her and yeah she gets flavian no doubt, we'll break again from the inside. She's five to two on the morning line. Meanwhile, Lady Prance a lot gonna make the trip from the West Coast for Richard Baltus and Joe Talamo in town to ride. Yeah, she ran a bang up race in the Delmark Oaks with uh, losing to Cambria Park, but this was her winning the honeymoon at Santa Anita, a little grade three. This is the issue I have, I, I get it. Cambria Park is a nice filly, but she is probably fifth or sixth in the Chad Brown Barnes when it comes to even that category. Um, and the horses that come from California to New York on dirt are dangerous as they, as they come. But when they come here on turf, I just play against. I think Lady Prancelot is a play against. And I respect Richard Baldus. I think he's one of the better trainers in the game. Get on a $10 bonus on the final legs of the Turf Triple Series on Saturday with Naira Betts hit a $20 win bet on Jockey Club Derby and the Jockey Club Oaks on the Naira Betts app. It scored $10 bonus, so that's a turf triple double bonus. Go to NairaBets.com for all the details. A little triple double uh, action. I was gonna say, how many triple doubles did you have in high school? Mess around, get a little <laughs> tripped up. <laughs> Go to NairaBets.com or on the Naira Betts app. We're gonna earn a little extra money uh, in your account. It's gonna be a fun Saturday afternoon here. And again, beautiful weather expected Yeah, some new races also are being drawn up too, so. I, I'm with you. Tomorrow's going to be a very, very fun card. Yeah, I also have that Grand Prix American Jockey Club Invitational. Say it Andy again. was. I went Grand Prix. Uh, Grand, I, I like it, though. You went Team Crumpets on it. Uh, right. Christy Cat Stakes coming up next to our feature race. Will it be Gate to Wire with St. Moon for Jorge Navarro? I got a sneaky one I'm going to give you when we come back. into the final furlong of the Claiborne Breeders' Futurity, and Classic Empire wins it in style. Here's the minor, Classic Empire! He's a champion two-year-old! Here's the champ, Classic Empire! Classic Empire! Eclipse champion Blaine was considered by many as the breakout stallion of 2018. His top runners included grade one winner and Eclipse Award finalist Marley's Freedom, plus grade one winner Fault, and graded stakes winners Moral, Beyond Blaine, Miss Kentucky, and Blaine. This year, his two-year-olds have sold up to $700,000. Outstanding results, outstanding value. Blaine, standing at Cleburne Farm. the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Earn valuable reward points on bets 
play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. The turn of the for the half Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. What I love about our Run Happy Yearling is he has this unbelievable mind and he's got terrific presence. He's a very athletic horse, moves very well, easily, naturally. Another reason we're very excited about this colt is that his sister, Indian Pride, actually just won at Saratoga, broken maiden by about 10 lengths. To have an active family like that with a colt with his presence is it's awfully exciting for us. Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Set down for the drive, coming to the final furlong. Christy Cat leads by a length and a half. Ratings is second on the inside. Expensiveness toward the hedge. Plenty of grace, late run. But it's Christy Cat, 100 yards from home and leading by a length and a half. And Ratings is chasing her all the way down to the wire. But it is Christy Cat, and Christy Cat draws off at the end to win it by almost two. That's who this race coming up is named after Christy Cat, tremendous performer on turf, won the Diana as well on turf. Yeah, tremendous racehorse. You can see the way she lowered her head and got that done very, very easily. And yeah, she gets honor with a race today and a very good race um, as she did some very good work on the racetrack. This uh, turf sprint though coming up here, six furlongs. And again, at St. Moon, if you're just tuning in, favorite the one to catch. That's why she's favored in here. She could be loose alone on the lead. She's got the right rider aboard too. Luis Saez always seems to take advantage when he is on a horse with speed in these turf races. Yeah, let's be honest. So she got left last time and still carved out 21 and change. Now the three, Brooke Marie, if you look two back, she was able to chase 21 and one, 44 and four, pass a horse at Monmouth Park. And this is the race we're gonna show you. She's gonna have to run this race today. She's gonna have to stay on St. Moon, unless the six comedy, the Irish bred horse that has shown speed over in Ireland. But when they usually come over here, it takes them a little while to get used to the gate. So the six is a worry for me getting out of the gate. But if she breaks, it would set up for the three. But Brooke Marie runs this race, she's the winner. A big negative, wouldn't you say? She's six to one on the board. Well, it's a negative because everybody's betting the four, and I, you know, I didn't think that the six would be four to one. Listen to me. If you bet Europeans first time sprinting, you'd be broke. Let's be honest. It's just they, they don't break very well first time out. We saw uh, we see them break a little bit slower going a longer distance. They got time to make it up. And there's St. Moon. You want to go? You go two starts back, and you say, "Well, look, had the lead that day, got beat. She battled." head and head the entire way with a filly named Ella Nation who wound up completely backing up out of that race. Yeah. St. Moon fought on and wound up second in that race. Now, if she gets the lead alone today, it's going to be a totally different story. It could be, and she's going to get the lead alone. There's just nobody that can go as fast as her unless the six can. Um, obviously, working well in the morning or the three, but this is her last start at Saratoga, and it was over. She went 21-44. Probably everybody thought, okay, she's going to come back. Then she went 55 and one. She went 11 and one in that third quarter and then finished it off. So again, like I said, I singled the three, I get it. They're gonna have to catch this great Philly though. No question about it. And just the thing, yeah, I don't know if anyone could put any heat on this Philly early on in the race to make her job more difficult. Here's Peaceful. Now Peaceful went against St. Moon in Peaceful's debut. She did not get out of the gate well at all in that race. Spotted the entire field several lengths, yeah. still past some horses who would go on to win out of that race to get up for second, and then she'd win next time out with a cleaner break. So she has talent for Jonathan Thomas. Well, it wasn't a cleaner break last time either. I mean, she sort of broke it slow both of her starts, but man, she can run. She got a little kick, and this is where she won last time up and got up by a neck. She beat first wave. And she did all the running completely outside, got left and sort of grinded away. I always thought she would like it a little bit farther. So I think the six furlongs and the sweeping turns are gonna help her, but she's gotta get out of the gate. The one hole's not great for her. And if she can get pace up front, look out for her late. Javier Castellano was aboard for the maiden score. He is back aboard today. Time for a paddock report. Let's go to Maggie Wolfendale. Polly, great minds thinking alike here with number one, Peaceful. I totally agree with you because she's this bigger filly that the Belmont turns might suit her a bit better, though um, we'll see as she just looks fantastic. She was the one that my eye was just 
immediately drawn to here for Jonathan Thomas. He's, he looks to win back to back Christy Cats. So he took down the 2018 version with Tesora here. I just think she looks fantastic. I know she's lightly raised. She was beaten by St. Moon in their debut, but she was very green that day. So I think she has uh, matured since then. As we'll move on to number five, Dancing Vega. Uh, she'll try something new here after her stateside debut was pretty disappointing as the beaten favorite, well beaten favorite that day, as this is the shortest she's ever run in her career, the six furlongs. But I got to say, she's very stocky and broad and she's built downhill. So I'm totally for her turning back in distance. She is impressive looking and I want to give her another shot. Usually these horses that just physically impress me so much, I want to give them, you know, a couple chances to get it together. If they don't do it after the second or third, then I sign the divorce papers because they're just good. They just win the beauty contest. They don't win the war out there on the racetrack. But uh, I'm interested in Dancing Vega as number six is comedy. She was pretty quick over in her European races. She would go straight to the lead there. Um, she'll go out for trainer Michael Dickinson for the first time. I don't know if she's necessarily as fast as our American sprinters, that's for sure. But she's definitely a sprinter. She's compact, very short backed in here. She's been professional in the paddock here. Um, she is on the muscle, which is a good sign. But as far as fitness is concerned. She's going to have to come back uh, off a layoff dating back to the late September. So I just feel like maybe she needs one. Then again, it's Michael Dickinson and he surely can get one ready off an extended layoff. We'll see where she is and, and how things play out for her. I'm interested to see what she does from the gates and where she'll be placed early on as riders are up here for today's feature. Greg, it's a Christy Cat. Yeah, riders up, and that's definitely a barn. You, you don't worry about <laughs> coming off the bench with Michael Dickinson in comedy. Let's go back to the 2017 Christy Cat. Oh, this was an incredible performance from Rubelinda. In fact, she had two starts in a row. Her allowance or performance before this came from near the back of the pack, had to reroute and still get up for the win. Uh, she would go in to win the pebbles out of this. I had such high expectations for her out of this for Chad Brown. This would wind up being the Christy Cat and the Pebbles, her, her two best moments. Yeah, two best moments. Now, look at her reaching out with that head. She came from way out of it. So it just shows you going six rounds. And you see the past four winners, uh, Tesora, Rubalinda, Ultra, Brat for Grand Motion, and Miss Ella. I forgot he won this two races, uh, two years in a row. And um, we'll see what happens. Jonathan Thomas obviously has a runner in here. And so does Chad. So we'll see what, so how it Graham, goes. Yeah, yeah Graham does too, yeah. So, Queen of Bermuda is an interesting horse to eat in here. Woodbine, Mama Churchill Downs, Aqueduct. This is going to be the fifth start um, at the fifth different racetrack. So it seems like Graham likes to bring her around to different places, this three-year-old filly. She runs well usually each time. Last time they stretched her out the mile, she didn't like it. So back to sprinting. There she is, 11.01 on the Graham Motion Runner. Exceed and excel filly. Joe Bravo will be aboard. Double digit odds. The only one in the field who is double digit wow. odds. And actually ran second in a stake sprinting at Monmouth. Yeah, I'm with you. And like we've said before on the Saratoga live shows, that the sprinting races at Monmouth played at Saratoga. And they play here too on the turf. They just do for some reason. And um, that's why the four will probably be tough in here. But don't be afraid to play the horses from, from Monmouth on the turf. Get signed up, play along with us. $200 new member bonus. Use again that promo code LIVE at sign up to take advantage. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime with NowRebets.com. Our post parade for our feature is coming up here for the Christy Cat. We're going to start off with Peaceful, coming off that maiden win. And again, yes, needs to break a little more alertly, but did break better, better in start number two than the debut. Yeah, and this is a perfect case. A horse that debuted at Monmouth, and then Jonathan brought this horse to Saratoga and got the money. And... Could be dangerous if there's pace up front. Brooke Marie, Christophe Clement, Ronner Jr., Alvarado aboard. This is a ridiculous price. Two for eight, lifetime. The best races have been here at Belmont and does have a good race over a yielding track. And that was going long. St. Moon, the one to catch and the one to beat on the board as well for a Jorge Navarro with Luis Saez. Listen, if the six doesn't get out of the gate, she's going to be by herself with, I would think, the three Brooke Marie right behind, behind her. But it's her race to lose. Maggie thought this one intriguing. I do, too. This filly has been working extremely sharp in the morning for Chad Brown. Yeah, and, you know, listen, she's got a pedigree with uh, Australia and New Zealand on the bottom side. They're usually better sprinters, and maybe that's what Chad's thinking here. She's not really getting played, though, at the window. 
comedy. Michael Dickinson hasn't run since Newmarket back in her two-year-old campaign. She's a Group 3 winner. Yeah, does she hold the key to this race? Can she go at St. Moon? Maggie makes a good point. Different speed here than it is over in Europe. Turf War, Joel Rosario and the other Chad Brown runner in here who was third beat of length in the state's debut sprinting at Saratoga. Problems at the gate in her first two starts. She needs to get out of it and get out of it in a better position. She puts herself behind the eight ball, but look for her late. Graham Motion Runner, 11 to 1 on the board. Group 3 winner in Great Britain, Queen of Bermuda. And Joe Bravo is aboard, and her best race was with him above, I mean, on her. And she got steadied in that race. She probably could have won it at 11 to 1. Could take a stab there. Yeah, she was fourth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint as well. Rose Flower, Christophe Clement's other runner. 7 to 1 on the board out there somewhere. Yeah, this one for. Athlone racing here, Manuel Franco, the second lightly raced filly in this uh, field. She won last time out over in France. Um, debuts with Lasix, so a tough read at 7-1. to one. Uh, Peaceful, and there's the nine, Manny Franco aboard. So there's our first look at her. First start since July and state's debut coming up. Peaceful took a big move forward in start number two. She broke her maiden out. Jonathan Thomas trying to ask for an even bigger move with a stakes win. Let's go to Maggie Wolfendale. As we watch her warm up by herself with Javier Castellano aboard. Jonathan, talk to me. We usually don't get to see trainers and watch them warm up. Uh, about this warm up, though, is this what you like to see? Yeah, she broke away from the pony with, with some vigor and looked like she, look, she's warming up on the dirt, but she seems to be moving really well and doing all the things you like to see a horse do before they run. Now, she was beaten by St. Moon in her first start. Then she came right back at Saratoga to break her maiden. Uh, is she a horse that just has that come from behind style or are you going to try to make her more tact uh, tactful in later races or we just hoping that the pace comes back? I'm guessing with this third time out, she'll probably have a better idea what to do. Um, you know, she got a little unlucky first time out not breaking, but, you know, I, I would assume she'll show a little more gas, but we'll, we'll let Javier dictate that. What was the thinking behind breaking maiden going to a stakes race? Three-year-old, you know, and, and some of the opportunities she, she ran very – uh, competitively on like sheet numbers and she just kind of belongs in this group it's it's a it's a pretty good rendition of this race so uh, you know we'll, we'll see where we lie physically she certainly does and you'll be looking for back-to-back -back wins here uh, in this Christy cat but uh, want to ask you also about one of your other very nice horses and Catholic boy I haven't seen him since the suburban what is he up to he uh, he had a couple nice works at Saratoga got down here about four days ago and uh, we plan on breezing tomorrow, but with the state of the track, I don't know. We'll just kind of play it by ear or breeze Sunday and see how that goes and, you know, start looking for some stuff. Cool. Looking forward to it. Well, looking forward to watching Peaceful here. Jonathan, thanks, and best of luck. Thank you. All right, Peaceful. Wow, that was quite a nice warm-up we caught out there, wasn't it, Greg? It was, and we'll see. I mean, you have a, a filly who breaks her maiden on turf impressively like Peaceful did, who certainly took a big move forward in her second start. Why not take a shot in this race? Yeah, and listen, she's got... Two good races, like you said, in her belt. Um, you can't really say she's undefeated because she beat Maiden's second time out, but she's run two bang-up races. She hasn't been great at the gate, um, but she still brings her a run. And if you look in the last race, they went 22-3, 45-3. They didn't go that fast, and she still ran them down. So um, she's very talented. Jonathan won this race last year, so he knows how to get a horse ready. So I I'm surprised at the 5-1 on her. I'm surprised again at the 7-1 on the 3 I'm surprised that the six is seven to two. Maybe the, the works in the morning have been great, but she's going to have to deal with St. Moon. I know it says strength to the lead, early to the lead, but I don't know if she's going to outfoot the four. Well, she put together three wins in a row, including a group three performance at Deauville. But those are six, eight, and nine horse fields. I get it. And, they're, and the, the time form ratings are just, I don't know if they stack up here. I, I just think, 7-2, I get it. Michael Dickinson's a wizard. Listen, one of my favorite horses of all time is De Haas, and that's who his trainer was. Um, and he, he does great stuff. But I just, horse been gone since September. New surroundings getting on the turf. They might have brought her over here thinking that they wanted fast ground, not this soft ground. Usually that's what happens. I don't know at 4-1. to one. Meanwhile, there's the daughter of Warfront. Bred by Calumet Farm Turf War. This is the other Chad Brown runner. He also has the five dancing Vega. And this horse has had two turf sprint starts here in the U.S. They both came at Saratoga third and then fourth 
last time out, so we didn't really see a whole lot of improvement in that second start. But a horse who, who is a winner Very overseas. Good on yeah. You so think with about the it is the ground. Galileo on the bottom side you know, always seems like they love a little cut in the ground. And if you look, first start on May 5th, um, first Saturday, May actually uh, on Derby Day in France, she ran on a soft ground. She was second. Then she went on a soft ground and she won. Um, and she ran her best race here over a little bit of give. So Turf War could be the horse that might like it. Wind's blowing pretty good here as you well. <laughs> but we managed to hang on to our notes. Uh, <laughs> let's send it downstairs to Maggie. Something very odd going on with the board here for this Christy Cat. In regards to the two Christoph Quamont runners, definitely did not see both of them going off at the same price as Brooke Marie is a huge overlay uh, at seven to one. Maybe that means she's dead on the board, but number nine, Rose Flower for Christophe Clement. She'll make her stateside debut as she gets Lasix. She was a little bit green when she came out here green as to American racing, I should say, um, to join up with the pony. She did not want to go the right way. She she opted to go the, uh, she didn't want to go the wrong way, I should say, in the post parade and opted to go the right way on the racetrack. And so, therefore, it's just, she just doesn't seem totally cranked up. I feel like this is, well, an opportunity for, for a horse who has won two races. She's a three-year-old. It makes sense. But I also think that this is the shortest she's ever run, that she's going to want more ground than this. She does look pretty fit off a of little bit of a break, but I'm gonna take the wait and see approach with this German bred filly, Rose Flower, for Christophe Clement as they are loading in the gate, Greg. All right, loading up here for the Christy Cat and the favorite two to one. Catch me if you can on the four filly, St. Moon for Jorge Navarro and jockey Luis Saez. Let's send it upstairs for the call of our feature. Here's Larry Colmas. Rose Flower stepping up the line, goes in. They're all in line. They're off in the Christie Cat. And it is St. Moon right out to the early lead. And Comedy goes two. It's these two out to the front together. A length and a half clear of Brooke Marie and then Peaceful on the inside. Queen of Bermuda and Dancing Vega all bunched right together. Three to Rose Flower. Turf War is the trailer. Ten lengths off of front running St. Moon and Luis Saez, who lead the way in the early stages here, prompted by Comedy on the outside. Brooke Marie is third, just in behind the pacemakers and down on the hedge. And then comes Dancing Vega and right there to the outside, as they make their way toward the far turn, the opening quarter was 21.87 seconds. So around the turn they go, and it is St. Moon up top. Brooke Marie has now come up into second position. Comedy is backed off on the outside. Dancing Vega now takes third. Peaceful is fourth and racing down on the inside as they come toward the top of the stretch. Queen of Bermuda roused on the far outside too. They're into the stretch, and it is St. Moon in front. Coming to the eighth pole with Brooke Marie on the attack on the outside. These two locked in battle. Peaceful making progress to their inside, and Turf War is now coming from the back of the pack too. But but it's Brooke Marie in front. Turf War from dead last is moving. Brooke Marie, Turf War is going to make it tight, and Turf War is going to get up and win. Running down Brooke Marie in the last strides. Rose Flower and Peaceful were next. Turf War, the other Chad Brown runner. Who's the bigger price? At eight to one with a win here, wearing down your leader in the front end, Joel Rosario. Wow. And Joel Rosario waited as long as he could. Look at the seven, dead last. Junior Alvarado sitting in second with a ton of racehorse. And you can see he gets the split. What a ride there by Rosario. He didn't have to go around the six, who was just not liking it. Right here, the three looks home and cooled out. Race is over, but Turf War just keeps on coming. And you just don't want Joel Rosario in your rear view mirror. It just, it's not a good thing. And not only does this horse get up, gets up pretty easily, actually, and wins the race by about a head or so. Junior's starting to leak out a little bit to make him go around, but it's just, it's just Joel. He's just so strong. And like we said, the Galileo's like a little cut, and Chad Brown just keeps on continuing. Yeah, we showed you that uh, performance from Rubalinda for Chad Brown a couple of years yep. ago. Does it again there. Uh, coming from well off the pace for the win of Daughter of War front, wearing down Brooke Marie, who ran very good here for Christophe Clement. Wound up in the end coming down to five to one. Brooke Marie puts away St. Moon, cannot hold off Turf War. Yeah, and I probably ruined myself because I thought I was home, but um, yeah, five to one was just too much on Brooke Marie. She likes a little give in the ground, and she just ran into a filly that just went by her. And 
Go look at the seven again. This is what she does every time. She breaks dead last. But again, I, I was trying to focus on it before. She always brings her run. Um, and the thing about Rosario, he doesn't sort of panic. See how he just sort of gets her in rhythm? First time he's ever been on her, and he just let her sit back. And listen, you're the best horse when you break that much, and you go that wide, and you go that around everybody, especially when the three had the trip. And I'm giving it to you. Listen, I needed the three for the pick five because I had all – and I got snapped, but the seven was the best horse. How can I complain? Where was this performance in Saratoga from this filly? I just think the cut in the ground really helped her. And a little bit of a sweeping turns, war front out of Galileo. She had run a mile over in France. I think she always wanted this. And if she can figure out her gate problem, she's got a future. She just ran sub 110, and this track's yielding right now. Turf war, eight to one. Not often you get that on Chad Brown. Here in the New York Racing Association circuit, you do with Turf War, Joel Rosario, one of the best finishing riders in the game, finds more finish on Turf War. She gets her first state's win while we'll prices when we come back. Piranha, the leader in fly control and wipe and spray products, now has premium equine grooming products. Introducing Aloe Pro Shampoo, an organic concentrate enriched with vitamins A, D, and E, and silk protein. Piranha Detangler, a dry comb through detangling spray that conditions, moisturizes, keeping tail and mane manageable. And Shine Baby Shine, a water based coat conditioner that leaves a show ring shine every time. Visit piranhaeat.com to see our full line of equine products and for a limited time, use promo code NIRA to receive a 10% discount on your order. Piranha on, pests gone. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every, screen. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. Use promo code TRYRTN for a five-day free trial. He's got a lot of the physical traits that Run Happy stamp in his foals with. He's uh, a big horse. He's very well balanced and he looks precocious and fast. He's got lots of bone, very correct, and a big walk and, and very smart head to him. He's very intelligent, Colt. Temperament as well. My horse is a beautiful temperament. He lies down in the stall every day and just a cool horse to be around. Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Back on America's Day at the Races, it's brought to you in part by Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual unusually well. Our feature race in the books, Joel Rosario, a happy man after running down Brooke Marie on turf war for trainer Chad Brown, owned by Martin Schwartz, daughter of Warfront with the win, $19.60 for the victory as we go to the winner's circle with Maggie. Here with winning rider Joel Rosario aboard Turf War today, taking down the Christy Cat. And she needed every bit of the six furlongs. Watching her five and a half races up at Saratoga, looked as though this distance would uh, would be successful for her. Joel. Yes, yeah, she, she was. She came running in the end, and then, you know, that, that, I think that's probably what she wanted to do, yeah. First time on her, had a good feel from her from the beginning? Yeah, she, she, she broke well out of there, and then just they kind of run away from me a little bit. I think they were probably going at good speed because she looked like she was not going slow in there, you know. She just was over control what she was and then uh, and then she came running, you know, with, and get the money. Now we're going to miss you tomorrow here at Belmont. You're going to Kentucky Downs, running a bunch of horses and stakes, but probably a mare who's quickly becoming one of my favorites, the Australian bred Alexandra. You're riding her in the ladies' sprint. You've had a lot of success with her this summer. Yeah, she is. She's nice filly and then, you know, we get along, look like we're getting along well. Hopefully we continue doing that. Gonna ride her exactly the same way you rode turf for, right? Uh, we'll see. It's a different track over there, so. Well, last to first. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we have that in mind. We don't, you know, and this thing changes. So, you know, just we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's horse racing. Well, good luck down there, but congratulations here in taking the Christy Cat. Thank you. All right, Joel Rosario brings his tack anywhere. We'll see how Alexandra, White Flag, and several others that he rides tomorrow down there at Kentucky Downs do. Greg. I mean, he's got a loaded day tomorrow, no doubt. But what a ride on turf where we talk about him all the time, how potent he is. He's one of the best finishing riders in this game, and he just gave us another example right there. Yeah, he's in 
the thing about Joel, when his timing is on, he just is, is special. And um, right now it is. He, he's just, he's in that groove. And it, through the end of the Saratoga meet, he had a couple great rides. And on the turf, too. And it seems like he just has got a nose for the wire, too, with his horses. And like I said, when you see him in the rear view mirror, you're in trouble. He reminds me of a modern day Eddie De La Husse. There's no panic in him. Nope. Whatsoever. Nope. Turf war broke last. Had a lot of work to do to make up on this field, and no problem at all. Take a look at the late pick five follow along. Pool Ooh. close to $140,000. There's the one price you need to help it return something. Boo. And you got knocked out. Yeah, Brooke Marie, boo. It's okay. We'll get him tomorrow. That's all right. It's a get out race coming up. Oh, yeah. We got a five horse field, some scratches here, but. Did you think the first time starters were the horses? No, they are betting the one in the 11. Yeah, Ice Princess, first time we're on the rail for Danny Gargan. And I am Ain on the outside, Philly by Big Brown. Some interesting works, including a bullet gate drill for Michelle Nevin. Yeah, I know. Bullet great, uh, gate drill. And Joel Rosario gets aboard. I, I think that's the giant factor here. A lot of horses scratched out like late out of this race. The story of Kitten was in the nine, got scratched. Um, I want to say by about race three or four. So only a field of five, but I think you can get a, uh, maybe a little bit of price in there. I like the seven at three to one. Final batter, battle of the Turf Trinity at Thread of Blue led every step of the way in the Saratoga Derby. Can he take two thirds of the first ever triple tomorrow? We'll preview it next. Flatter. This prolific son of AP Indy has sired six millionaires, including Eclipse champion West Coast. This year, he's adding even more stakes winners to his outstanding record, including Sovereign Award winner Avis Flatter. In the auction ring, his yearlings have topped the phasing Tipton July sale two years in a row. Success on the track, success in the ring. Flatter standing at Cleveland Park. Anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushers out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Yeah. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn to the link the head, please. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. Go from Railbird to Winner Circle. With My Racehorse, you have access to top horses and trainers, backside tours, exclusive ownership experiences, and fast payouts to your online account. With shares starting as little as $100, the Winner Circle is waiting for you. Go to MyRacehorse.com or download the My Racehorse app today to join the thousands who have already started their journey as a racehorse owner. It's America's original sport. And no one covers it better than America's Best Racing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues, cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. America's Best Racing.net is a sport for you. Live it, love it, bet it. Joy is in behind horses. Spinoff is there with Pluska Parfait. They're into the stretch and it's social paranoia. Arriving at the eight pole in front, Henley's Joy runs at him on the outside. It's these two with Henley's Joy and social paranoia stride for stride. Rock Emperor is finishing strongly on the far outside, but it's Henley's Joy in front and Henley's Joy wins the Belmont Derby. Led every single step of the way. Luis Saez, crafty ride in the Saratoga Derby, thread of blue. But Henley's Joy, of course, your winner in the Belmont Derby in the first leg of the sequence. Got a perfect yeah. ride, perfect trip, and a, and a horse who had had some bad luck before that. Yeah, and Mike Maker's just so good at trusting these horses out to a uh, longer distance to ground. You're right, Jose Lascano gave this horse an amazing ride from the six hole, saved all kinds of ground, and was able to out finish. Uh, social paranoia and got that grade one win, the son of Cut and Kitten Joy. Here's a threat of blue. So leg two, and it was what, 20 to one? 
in the Belmont yeah. Derby, 13 to one here in leg number two in the Saratoga Derby on the horse who would lead every step of the way. Can he do it again? Yeah, you know, Colt, completely different ball game, right? Henley's Joy sat from a tiny bit off the pace. You saw horses come from way out of it. Louis Saez stole this race. He got away with six furlongs in 112. And for a Colt like this, you're just not going to go by him. He has a ton of fight in him. Five for 10 lifetime with 880,000 in the bank. So he'll be the one probably leading him around. We'll be able to hold him off on uh, Saturday, which is obviously tomorrow. Four time winner on the turf, six of eight on the grass, first or second mm -hmm. for a threat of blue. So he's got fight in him as we saw in that American turf. I mean, he went down to the wire with Digital Age and then was able to turn the tables and hold off Digital Age in that Saratoga Derby. It's our ABR race of the week, but now Digital Age gonna have a chance to return the favor. Yeah, and it's Chad Brown, right? And a horse by Invincible Spirit. And will the ground be yielding tomorrow? We'll see. It's supposed to not be any rain. We're supposed to be a beautiful day out. Uh, we also got an invader on the outside of Spanish Mission and one of the best names um, out here, Tone Broke. The six. This <laughs> horse is an Ontario bred. Don't dismiss the horses from Woodbine. This horse won the Breeders' Futurity, which is actually the third leg of their Triple Crown, a mile and a half on the grass at Woodbine. Over yielding ground, there might be some cut in the ground. So don't dismiss Tone Broke. And it took two thirds of that Canadian Triple Crown. Meanwhile, back to a threat of blue. Has the inside post, which is going to help this speedster as well. Let's hear from Kieran McLaughlin, his thoughts on the Son of Hearts Spun. He's training fabulous. Um, he's came off of our big win up there, Saratoga Derby, and has had three works just like we wanted. And he's working great and doing well. We just hope that it stays firm. He's better on firm, but hopefully it's not too much rain. The mile and a half we're concerned with too, because we just don't know. We didn't know about a mile and three sixteenths last time either, so he did that properly, so hopefully he can get the mile and a half. He drew a good post down on the inside, the one hole, shortest way around there, and he'll leave there running and hope no one clears us or goes with us but if they clear us it'll be fine we can lay second but i just hope he goes slow early and finishes strong so there there's no questions of what the game plan is for a threat of blue and, and louis Saez. it's get to the front and see how far you can go yeah and i don't think there's anybody that can go with this colt i mean current on the, the right next to him and the two maybe like i said you have the four in the five in here that are first time Europeans, they're probably gonna lay back getting Lasix and the nine. So you have three Europeans that are gonna lay back. And listen, the American horses take the initiative. So a threat of blue, um, if he can get the mile and a half, uh, he's gonna be very, very tough. It's gonna depend on how the ground is. You, listen, if the ground is a little bit firmer and we start drying out, he's gonna be extra, extra tough. If it's yielding, we'll see what happens because that's his one race where he really didn't get to the lead. He sort of ran a bang, an, an average third and he needs to get to the front end. Meanwhile, Digital Age, we just saw Chad Brown strike in a stakes race yeah. here on turf. Digital Age, Maggie started out his career three for three, chased Henley's Joy in the Belmont Derby, chased a threat of blue. Now we'll try and turn the tables on those two again. Absolutely, Greg, as he does come in to this Jockey Club Derby with a very nice workout, albeit with a maiden by the name of Value Engineering, or I should say a recent maiden breaker. Um, but watching this work from Digital Age on the Oklahoma turf course, he was very impressive. I mean, he was hard on the bridle um, from the ent entire way around there uh, on the inside. They went 49 and 2, and you see Value Engineering having a a lot of trouble keeping up as his riders kind of shaking the reins at him and digital age just stays hard in the bridle, bridle the entire way i'm wondering this is a horse that in the past we've seen come from behind and he he lacks a bit of early speed now that is how chad brown likes to see his horses run but at times it's hurt him in the last first two legs of this this series it has hurt him so this work almost suggests to me that they might try to get him to sit a little closer um, as we see him gallop out here now i'm very bad at timing 
grooming horses, and especially on this turf track. But it almost looks as though he does go out in 24 and change 25, which is quite impressive for that last quarter mile um, galloping out. And like I said, he stays on the bridle the entire way. So I really like this workout from him. As we'll take a look at some of the horses here in the paddock for this last race, which is off the turf, uh, a maiden special weight for the two-year-olds. And we see three to two on a first time starting Michelle Nevin trainee. That is I am Anya. And uh, she actually owns this one as well. So, daughter of Big Brown. And now we're going on mile the 16th here. That's a tough task to ask a first time starter, especially over a track like this. And while she does look fit coming in here, great coat on her. She's awfully green, to be honest. And she does have that big brown influence, but on the bottom side, they've all been dirt sprinters for the most part. I'm worried about the distance and slash the fact that she's awfully green in here because she just doesn't strike me as one that is going to go this distance at first asking. Now, one that does have experience that's stretching out is number six, Courageous Girl. And she spent both of her first two starts entered on the main track and I almost looking at the pedigree I almost think that maybe Dave Dong thought this race would come off because there wasn't much turf pedigree to go on I like the fact she gets extra ground here she's been forwardly placed in those six furlong races um, and I I wouldn't be surprised to see her on the front end here because she does come into her races quite sharp, but she's big, she's scopy, and I think that more ground she gets to cover, the better. So I think Courageous Girl's very dangerous in here with Johnny V up as she currently sits at 5-2, to two, your second choice on the board, Greg. Post parade we'll have for you coming up after a short timeout. Nightcap ahead here on this first day, the Belmont Fall Meet. Who will handle... The sloppy sealed racetrack here in this finale. There's a first timer, the one for Danny Gargan, Ice Princess. We'll be back. Whether you have derby dreams or midsummer derby dreams, this is Tom Durkin to tell you a registered New York bred can take you there. Diversify. That New York bred exact and the Whitney by multimillionaires diversify and mind your biscuits shows the kind of quality that allowed New York breads to earn more than $93 million on the world stage last year. On track successes have spurred New York bred sales results. At the March OBS sale, Chestertown sold for $2 million. And this New York bred 2018 yearling brought a million at Saratoga. So get with the program at NY Breads. She's just a, a very obvious, very strong, well-made filly, great bone, great substance, a very easy filly to like, a very easy filly to get along with and I would say a, be a trainer's delight. What we really like about our unhappy yearling is uh, just he looks very, very fast. Uh, he's beautifully balanced, he's a great mover, we've just been so happy with the way he's grown up and matured and we really like him at the moment. Run happy. Standing at Claiborne Farm. This proven son of Giants Causeway has sired four millionaires, including Claiborne Farm stallion Lee. Recent top runners include Cutting Humor, winner of the Grade 3 Sunland Park Derby, plus three time graded stakes winner Sharp Samurai, and international star Shamal Nibras. This year, his two year olds have brought prices up to $310,000. First Samurai, standing at Claiborne Farm. Back on America's Day at the Races, our nightcap coming up on this sloppy, sealed racetrack. New York Breads made special weight coming up. Scheduled for the grass, main track now at a mile and a 16th, and a lot of money outside to I Am Anya for Michelle Nevin, the big brown filly. Yeah, this is a filly that she owns too as well. So um, she could have placed this filly wherever. Obviously, um, you know, Sometimes they'll get aggressive with their placing, but now, you know, she started her in a, in a maiden special weight race. She could have started her wherever she wanted. So obviously she's thinking highly of her. And with all the scratches, the money had to go somewhere. And I, I thought that, the, that both of the Phillies, the first time starters will get played, the one and the 11. They're forgetting about the two David Donk runners though, the six and the seven, they got experience. Well, that went over. Yeah, courageous girl, the six. Well, they're both getting bet, two, five to two. Everyone is basically Everybody in this is, race yeah. with the exception of the four. But Courageous Girl, two starts, has shown some ability, especially that first start, right? Yeah, listen, in her last race, 10 wide could have been kind. 
And I love Eric, and, and Eric and I talk all the time, and he even admitted, he goes, I got hung so wide, a horse sort of jutted out on me. This horse won't be 10 wide today. The seven should not, well, 12 to one to three to one, I think we'll end up going up a little bit. You know, start before that at Saratoga, fast good, track. Yeah. Like it is, yeah, hit the board. Was actually favored in that race in the second start of her career. That was a race that was taken off the turf, though. You make a good point there because I think the six and the seven, the public's looking at their first starts, right? 27 to one and 22 to one. So they're thinking, oh, they ran an average field. Then they came back and ran okay. Let's go for the first time starters, the one and the 11, because they haven't ran yet. They got to be better than the six and seven. And sometimes that can backfire. Here's our post parade. So here's one of the firsters. This one for Danny Gargan, a daughter of Palace Malice, Manny Franco aboard. Ice Princess. Well, here's the thing about this horse. Two straight turf works, they were average. Then the last dirt work, the clockers gave it very good. So uh, I would think she's live. It's the daughter of cross traffic, tornado crossing, first time out. The people that have all in this race are rooting for this one in the pick four and the pick five. She's by far the biggest payoff. Yeah, no question. 10 to 1 on the board. So the two David Donk runners, here's the first. Courageous girl, daughter of Bourbon Courage, start number three. We haven't seen a lot of uh, Sons and Daughters of Bourbon Courage, who was a very good sprinter. And this horse has shown speed and did um, get to the top of a 10-horse field. So maybe the six could be the speed of the speed. Beyond Brown, the other David Donk runner, didn't seem to love the sloppy going at Saratoga last night. No, but, you know, it was really, really wide. I give the horse a, an excuse, and I'm going to come right back with her. And I am on you to the outside. That bullet gate drill, 47 and two move quickest to 49 in the morning says that this filly might have some talent. Yeah, she owns and trains this first. Or it says she's one for 20 with her first time starter. She's better than that, and she can get him cranked up and ready. And the money has showed up. And I think the big part of that is Joel Rosario showing up on this filly by Big Brown. So that's your field. Two David Donk runners, two first time starters, bookends, and then the big long shot tornado crossing. For more on this nightcap coming up, let's go to Maggie. And I think the first time starter you won, at least from my vantage point, is number one, Ice Princess over I Am Anya. Ice Princess for Danny Gargan. Now, it's not a move Danny Gar Gargan is known for to be that successful at. He's successful at a lot of moves in horse racing, but starting first time uh, out two-year-olds isn't quite one of them. But Ice Princess in this depleted field off the turf, she is a daughter of Palace Malice. Yes, there's a little bit more turf pedigree. The dam was a good, a decent turf runner, happy clapper, but she was by Awesome again. So there's plenty of pedigree to handle a wet track here. And she's this big, elegant looking filly. She's wearing blinkers first time out, just a very short cut, but got a great warm up beneath Manny Franco. Galloped off by herself, incredibly professional the entire time. And look, she's moving quite nicely over the track as well. So she looks fit. And plus she has that big scopey size where a mount of 16th first time out, doesn't look it like it's going to be that tall of a task for her. Whereas with I am Anya, I wonder if uh, if she's going to get a little bit short, just given the way she's acting, given the way she's put together. So uh, I would rather take Ice Princess, but I'm going to go with experience given uh, this this uh, these conditions with Courageous Girl, guys. Nine to five. Thanks, Maggie, on this filly right here. First time out. So public saying I'm going to take the unknown quantity with the yeah. sharp gate drill for Michelle Nevin, who Michelle owns as well. That's the other part of this. Maggie made a great point. You know, they're going a mile. They're going a long distance for the first time out. So the 111 have to be fit. That's where the six and seven are. You know, they got the big advantage. The seven's got three races. The six has got two. Um and then stretching out. So the four, uh, David Canizzo, he just takes times with his horses. So uh, I would give that one maybe a look next time. But I'm surprised that the 11 is the favorite. Uh, uh, I really am. You know, never easy to win going long first time no. out. But, but it makes, it, it, makes it a little bit easier yeah. with all the scratches. when it's one turn. Yeah. When it, yeah. And... But, yeah, it's a good point. I mean, the donk runners, it, it makes you definitely look twice, right? It does. It does. I mean, listen, Joel's ridden six times for Michelle this year. He's 33%, so he's live. Ice Princess, when Danny Gargan's horses get bet, he's live. And look at when Manny Franco rides for Danny Gargan. Are you kidding me? 43%. So the percentages are with the one and the 11. But 
the six and seven have races. And I think going this distance first time out, that has to be considered. It means so much more, It does, right? it does, it does. Than, than any percentages of jockey trainers. We talk about it all the time. Tom Amos will tell you, it's like getting three works in the horse, one race. And it doesn't matter if it's a sloppy racetrack or not. Sometimes you want to get the fitness into them. But the way they're betting the 11, there's with intent. But Maggie's telling you, hey, I think the one's fitter. So, you know, take your pick. Again, I'm getting fourth choice with the seven, which I think is ridiculous. I think that horse, I actually thought the seven would be your favorite. Um, after that last trip when the horse was literally just completely taken out of it going into the far and, turn. And you see Maggie, Andy going with the six in here. Why'd you prefer Beyond Brown? I just, the last race, I mean, Eric had the horse in a decent position. He was laying in a nice spot and he was ready to make his move. He got pushed so far out of it. I mean, 10 wide is generous. He was way, way out of it, but I think he's going to be able to save ground. But today, all only in a five horse field. And I think this horse can finish this race. Loading up. There's Manny Franco on the first timer. Ice Princess. Favorite is this one right now. <laughs> Actually, wow. a two to one. Yeah. And usually Danny's horses show speed, and I would think she would um, from from the get-go here. Two to we got three horses. The one, the six, the eleven, all a two to one on the board. Wow, that's crazy. And then the seven at four to one, and then not much. Creedence being given to the four tornado crossing at double digit odds. But if you get that one home, 3,600 in the pick five. Even though it's been chalky, you just need a 13 to one shot to get you home. Will it be a first timer or one of the Donk runners with experience? There's the six for David Donk. Also sends out Beyond Brown with Eric Consell. Here's the nightcap from Belmont Park. Let's send it upstairs to the voice of New York Racing for the call. Here's Larry Colmus. Here's I Am Anya up to the outside stall to complete the line here. And they're all in line. They're off. And it is Courageous Girl who goes out to the front. I Am Anya's got some early speed beyond Browns between those two and is now moving up to challenge for the front. Tornado Crossing and Ice Princess are at the rear of the field, five lengths off the lead, as it is Courageous Girl who takes charge early here. Beyond Brown goes with her a half length behind on the outside. Ayamanya's backed off two lengths from them, and now Ice Princess moves up in hand between horses, only two and a half lengths off the lead. The trailer Tornado Crossing is right next to her on the inside through a 22.95 opening quarter mile, so the pace very honest here, set by Courageous Girl and John Velasquez, who lead by almost a length. Beyond Brown is second as they approach the far turn. And it's Ice Princess running along in third position. On the outside, I Am Anya is fourth. And then comes Tornado Crossing, 47.2 was the half mile. Courageous Girl, the leader. Beyond Brown keeps on pressing on the outside second. Ice Princess has made her way up into third. And now Manny Franco is asking a bit more from her, and she's giving it. And she's moving up on the outside of the leaders as they make their way around the turn. These three hook up clear of Ayamanya. Tornado Crossing not going on with them. So it is Ice Princess who's circling up on the outside with run. Courageous Girl is down toward the rail, tries to stick with her. Beyond Brown is now going to swing up on the far outside. She's bearing out as they come to the top of the stretch. Ice Princess is the leader here. Opening up from Courageous Girl. And then it's Beyond Brown and I am on you to the inside. Approaching the 16th pole. And it's Ice Princess and she's running away. Ice Princess and Manny Franco come bounding home, well clear of Courageous Girl. I Am Anya was third and then came Beyond Brown. First time out, Danny Gargan, Manny Franco, Flying P Stable, Ice Princess, the daughter of Palace Malice with a win. Yeah, and let's go back to the beginning. She broke the worst out of all of them, but you, Manny Franco did a good job. Great call by Larry Comas because he said, listen, Ice Princess is pulling Manny Franco up into the um, into this race. And when it looked like the six and the seven, the two horses that have run had this race themselves, the first click was 23 and change going very fast for this distance. But you can see right there, Manny made the move. Let me get this horse right off the rail. Let's not get the kickback. Let's just settle. And then I looked at you, Wolfie, and I'm like, wow, she's taking one stride to their two strides. This race is over with. Eight to five. Ice Princess, not easy to do. First time out, going this distance. And a great call by Maggie. She basically told you, listen, the 11 was favored over the one. 
nah, -uh. the one's fitter than the 11, dead on. That's why she's the best in the paddock. One, six, 11, seven. Ice Princess closes out this opening day card with a win, and so this is gonna get you back. Like almost $600, amazing payoff. Yeah. Six hundred three dollars. All you needed was in the late pick five. All you needed was turf war, right? All you needed was turf war, and Ice Princess. Like we said, like it looked like a race where a first-time starter could win, and they got it dead right. I mean, wow. Manny was just sitting chilly the whole way. Passenger. And we we've been saying it all day long. I mean, days like this sometimes a lot of. Runners just don't handle the track. Yeah. So you see big gaps and margins of victory, and we see it again here in the nightcap. Eight to five, Ice Princess loving this sloppy going here. We'll be back with prices right after this here and conclude this opening day of this Belmont Fall Meet. This colt in particular has got a great eye and presence. He's intelligent, he's practically tireless and just always wants to do more. And I know that when he's in the hands of a, a trainer at a, at a grade A track, they're gonna get a lot out of him. He's, he has a lot to give. Just a really cool horse, always at the top of the pack out there. And uh, I think that reminds me a lot of Run Happy. Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. It's America's original sport. And no one covers it better than AmericasBestRacing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle. The best races, horses, and destination venues. Cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. AmericasBestRacing.net is a sport for you. Live it. Love it. Bet it. Oh, we're gonna go traveling. on your computer or Naira Bets app. Earn valuable reward points on bets, play in our exclusive promotions, and earn cash rebates. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. Welcome back to America's Day at the race as the hot pink silks of Flying Pea Stable flew into the winner's circle with first time starter Ice Princess, trained by Danny Gargan, who now joins me here in the winner's circle. And Danny, you know, given the qual putting quality of field aside, this effort is actually a lot better than it might appear when you look back at it on paper. Well, we brought her in the race, actually, you're thinking she'd probably need a race, but we knew she would dirt. Uh, I f thought I'd win the race with my other filly, Astoria, who uh, scratched because she's a grass horse. But uh, when it scratched down like this, I told uh, the, you know, the owners, everybody involved, I said, we're going to go ahead and let her, you know, see, if we, see what we can do today. And, you know, she's trained really forward. She's a big filly. She'll run all day. And, I, you know, when I was standing in the paddock looking at all of them, she was, you know, she was much superior to look at it in the paddock. She, she's by far the biggest and strongest horse. So I told Manny I was pretty confident before the race. I said, you know, you're probably going to have three or four late in stretch. I said, but keep her alert. And that's what we did today. Now, she didn't break that well. And then all of a sudden, she just was there for Manny. And, and Manny was quite aggressive around the turn, knowing how much horse he had. Yeah, but I told him to be aggressive on the turn. But we, my horses, is the first time out, they don't, they're don't, they not really breaking that fast this year. I probably should have won with another one. But, you know, that's the way it goes. But she, when they're going this far and they're this much the best, they can overcome a lot. So it was all, all you, no, no Manny. Oh, completely. Yeah, that's what I thought. Boom, mic drop. Bye, Danny. Nightcap and I'm oh, out. That's great. It's he's all like, in the training. He's looking back at Maggie and he's laughing. They have a great <laughs> relationship, uh, Danny and Maggie. But wow, he did a good job. Uh, and that's pretty scary that he thought that this horse might need one. Yeah, how about that? How dangerous this horse going to be next time out. Uh, Dandy win. 
Dandy. For Danny Gargan? Yes. Here in the nightcap? Yeah, of course, Dan won the Jim Dandy with tax. Yes. Yeah, he did. Um, by the 10, way, the Empire thousand? Sins carry over 10,000 already. That late pick five is unbelievable considering all you needed was turf war because you got favorite, should have been favorite, favorite, and then favorite to end the day. Uh, but that turf war and Joel Rosario, $563 just shows you it pays to open a Naira Beth account. You got to believe in this game, just like uh, when you're playing a pick five or a pick six, you got to have hope. And sometimes in this game, it can be hard. Then a horse like Run Happy comes along. Jim McInville was thinking about getting out of the game. And of course, he's very glad he stayed in because Run Happy was a horse of a lifetime for him. I started owning racehorses in 1995. So it's been a long journey to find Run Happy. And in fact, uh, Run Happy is gonna be the last horse I ever owned. And I was getting out of the business. I had so many disappointments and heartbreaks and lost so much money at it. And there came, then came Run Happy. So I guess the lesson there is persistence, never give up. The King's Bishop was a great yeah. race. That was my lifetime going horse racing. I'd been winning a grade one race, never won one before then. And Run Happy won that race in almost, in stakes record time, almost track record time. So he got a 113 buyer, one of the great performances of his wonderful career. So it was definitely a highlight, not only of my racing life, but my whole life. Run Happy has won the Naira.com Kings Bishop by four. His performance in the Breeders' Cup sprint was uh, one that uh, people will talk about for years to come. I mean, it was uh, another, yet again, freaky performance, set the track record. Uh, the way he did it was pretty incredible. The Breeders' Cup was a great race. He was up against a bunch of great horses and got a little behind, was way behind at the top of the stretch, and then he made an amazing run down there and won the Breeders' Cup race. Run Happy just keeps coming at him past the 16th pole. Run Happy, and boy, does this horse love to run. The Breeders' Cup sprint champion, new track record at Keeneland, so a grin, just a, a testimony to this great horse and the team behind him, which was, you know, Laura and Cordell and the team that devoted so much time, effort, and energy to Run Happy. He was just everything that uh, the that groom wanted with a horse. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. No horse had ever won the Breeders' Cup sprint to come back and won, won the Malibu, uh, you know, a month and a half later. So that was kind of a gamble. We wanted to put him in the, in the Malibu, and he won that uh, with Gary Stevens aboard uh, pretty easy. So that was another great race. Run Happy is simply super. He polishes off an outstanding campaign with a dominant victory in the Malibu. He won at Keeneland, he won at Santa Anita, he won at Saratoga, se several of the legendary places in horse racing. And what a great horse, what a great uh, thrill it was to be around, run happy, and now to follow his stud career. We couldn't be prouder to have run happy and have him stand at Claiborne Farms. That is myself and my daughter's happy place. We love Claiborne Farms and run happy loves being there. We put him in stall number one for a reason. We have a lot of confidence in this horse. We think uh, he has all the capabilities and. Uh, characteristics that you kind of look for in a great stallion. You know, he had the speed, he had the form, he he had the freaky talent, the athleticism, um, and he's really throwing it in his foals and uh, yearlings. So we're over the moon with what we've seen. We think we feel like we're in a great spot, and uh, now it's it's up to the offspring to prove it. I'm looking forward to his his first winner and hopefully his first uh, greatest stakes winner. So uh, we're going to have a lot of our own run happy as we campaign ourselves and. Obviously, lots of other people have run happy, so we're really looking forward to see if he can pass on his brilliance to these horses. We're more than pleased. Keeneland came out the other day, and we're raving about the run happies that they've seen in their inspections. And uh, we have a couple here that are very nice, and one's uh, extremely nice, and we're, uh, he's a book one candidate. So uh, we're looking forward to showcasing him in book one, hopefully, Keeneland. And, um, you know, um, I think the buyers will like what we've seen. We have four run happy yearlings and we hope to buy some more at the sale, so hopefully we'll end up with 10 or 12 by next year. We decided to stay in for the majority share of Run Happy, so Run Happy is still part and parcel of our family. We think about him every day, and he's just, uh, he's a champion to all of us. It's gonna be so fun to watch the Run Happies yeah, hit the racetrack in 2020, and again, Saratoga next summer, win an open maiden special 
with a run happy hundred thousand dollar bonus on the line. I got to give uh, Mattress Mac a little bit of credit. He won one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar race yesterday at forty to one at Kentucky Downs. Him Did and he really? him and Laura Willers. Yes. Well done. Weekend stake schedule. We got a great weekend ahead. Saturday is going to be sensational. Jockey Club Derby. The Oaks as well in the Turf Triple Series and the Grand Prix American Jockey Club Invitational worth $300,000. Final leg of the Trinity and one of the Euro Invaders for trainer David Simcock, son of Noble Mission, Spanish Mission. Three to one morning line should handle the distance no problem at all but there's some other issues i think this horse is the winner and i'm going to tell you why david simcock when he ships into north america he's four for 11 almost 37 percent and this is the horse the last three times that that he has ran he has been absolutely dynamite since he's been on the turf the last time he got steady completely out of it and should have won the time before that he won by four lengths and his time form ratings keep going up and up and jamie spencer's going to come in a ride from powers court fame he didn't give one of his best rides on that day in texas when he got beat by uh, kittens joy and uh, ramon dominguez buried him but this is a horse by noble mission remember another horse by noble mission won the travers honor code so what kind of sires noble mission uh excuse me uh, code of honor, <laughs> I want to say honor code, but code of honor but noble mission having a pretty darn good um, sire career so far, and I think Spanish Mission is a major player tomorrow. Group three winner uh, at a mile five ace and one going away that day by four Kentucky plus Kentucky bred two, by the way. Yeah, good call. Jamie Spencer, as you mentioned, will be aboard. Uh, your take on digital age? What do you think? I think I'm going to play against just because Thread of Blue and Henley's Joy has gotten the best of him the, the last couple times. Um, you got to try to beat Chad Brown to get paid, don't you? Yes, you do. Jockey Club Derby. It happens tomorrow. Final leg of the Trinity and Tiara division in the Christie Cat today. It was Chad Brown. <laughs> don't try and beat him here. Turf War at 8-1 to one with Joelle Rosario, three-year-old filly by Warfront. Her first win in the States in Stakes Company. Thanks for joining us for the opening day of the Belmont Fall Meet. We will see you tomorrow at 1 Eastern.